Let me get this here. All right, hello, old man Jank, and uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Um, I am, of course, your host, Leisure Llama, and today we are going to be playing City Skylines. Uh, so, unfortunately, last week um, I ran into an issue and autosave was not turned on, which means that I lost approximately five and a half hours of build time. Now, uh, I don't really like that I lost five and a half hours of build time, and so I decided that it would be a good opportunity to sort of like start fresh. Um, see the sale for games like CS. I don't like CS like Counter-Strike. Uh, I haven't seen any Steam sales recently. I haven't looked at any. Hmm. Oh, no. Uh, I haven't. Um, oh, that'd be really cool. I'll have to look into that. Uh, because I really like these, uh, these builder games. Yeah, Paradox Management Weekend. Let's see. I think that I actually already own all of these games. <laughs> um, oh, Surviving the Aftermath became a free-to-play game? That's a little bit disappointing. I already own City Skylines, I already own Surviving Mars. I could pick up Prison Architect. Um, none of the DLC is on sale, though. Oh, but the collection is on sale. Ah, uh, but that's like 133 bucks. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, not super into that. So uh, I'll have to look and see what else is on sale, because I, I doubt that it's um, just Paradox. There's, there might be some other ones. So I'll, I'll have to, I'll definitely have to look at that because that, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, so, um, I ended up losing, oh, oh, and while also I'm doing the introduction, guys, help me come up with a name for my city. Um, like give, give me, give me a couple name options I can pick from. Uh, and I will try, I'm not going to guarantee it, but I'm going to try and use one of them. Hmm. So, uh, I ended up losing five hours of work. I installed some new mods. I'm going to start again on another city. Uh, and let's see. We could do like the Seahorse Islands or S Stephenville, Texas. Um, I did download these two maps. Um, but we could also probably do something up around here, like, uh, Wood Garden? Garden Rivers? Eden Valley sounds kind of nice. A new Llamasville. Alright, I like it. This is going to be New Llamasville. Uh, I'm thinking we're just going to go towards Eden Valley because that sounds kind of cool. And uh, we will roll with that. Uh, I'm going to jump back into the chat. All right, uh, I'm back. Hello, guys. Welcome. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you. You guys gonna play some Elden Ring? Yeah, I haven't played it actually in a, uh, really much this week. Hmm. Too much going on. I think I. Kind of. What are, what happened on Monday? We played other stuff, right? Cause I think so. Maybe I played for a little bit, and then we played Hots or something like that. And then Tuesday I had the uh, D and D. Ah. And then Wednesday was me and you. Right. And then today is Thursday. Uh, I, I won't have too much time to... Yeah, I won't have too much time to play today. Because I usually get off and shave and shit, so... Mm hmm. Take care of all of your body grooming. Not a, Nah. That, that'd be way too much and too much time. Just my face. Oh, okay. How long does it take you to do your face? Off of work to do all that shit. 
I, I need like three hours to take care of my whole body, bro. And that's and that's if he's like focused. Three hours. Uh huh. Damn. Uh -huh. That's a lot of time. It is a lot of time. I'm a very hairy man. Yeah, but That's why I don't do it often. Three hours? Yeah. I mean, maybe I don't get as detailed as you do, but I think it takes me an hour to, to do like my whole entire whole entire body you said you do your back and stuff mm -hmm. yeah I'm although I don't like I don't shave time I spend on the my front oh, part sorry, of it is like time I spend uh, grooming my face and for a chunk of like the hair around my cheeks and stuff I don't shave any of that I pluck all of that oh <laughs> wait well, you, really? You pluck the the hair on your cheeks? Mm -hmm. The like extra hair that like goes up, like up from my beard line towards like my eye, like eye. There's like little hairs that that most men will grow over time. I don't uh, shave those because they're just gonna grow in harsher. So I pluck those out. Wow. Well, that's some. Um... That's some dedication right there. Um, mm -hmm. Which is why I usually get off like an hour early. Because it takes me a little bit of time to do that. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I, I, I can imagine. I mean, um, uh, plucking, plucking hair is definitely takes, takes a lot more time. Uh, mm -hmm. I shave like my neck and then I take uh, clippers and I clip down like the length of my beard and like my mustache and stuff and then I edge my mustache up with my clippers. That's pretty much what I do. But the hair below my lip like around the line for like my goatee and stuff that all gets plucked if there's anything that's there. That is, uh, that's kind of wild. The, the, I, the, I mean, it, it's definitely, it's effective. It just seems, uh, really time intensive, like, which I imagine it is. I mean, that's, that's why it takes you. I do it once a week though. So it's not like I spend a lot of time like shaving your I shave once a week. Yeah, but I, still, I mean, it just—it seems like a decent bit to me. Like uh, a decent bit extra. How long does it take you to shave your beard? I, if I'm, well, I don't, I don't ever shave it. I just trim. And um, I it it takes me a couple of minutes, a, cu a couple minutes, because all I really do for the most part, unless I do like a full full trim, which I don't do, I do it every couple months. Um, I just get the above the cheeks, and then the neck, and then make sure everything's all lined up, and that like it it just takes a couple minutes at most to do. Do you razor shave your neck hmm. to skin, or do you just trim out, trim down your hair neck? I just, I just trim it. Uh, okay. And I trim it basically every day or every other day. Um, so, so it stays. Five minutes every two days, but you get a neck beard. Well, I don't really get. I don't think I get really a neck beard. It, it doesn't really. I don't think it stands out too much. Um, I 
and yeah, Old Man Jank, this is a, a new city. But like, it, it, it takes me like two minutes. It, it doesn't even take five. It takes like two minutes because I just line up the cheeks and then go up on the neck and then I'm done. Okay. But I mean, you definitely get a lot more precise with it than than uh, than I do. That's for sure. Personal preference, man. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's the look you want. And I, I, I is. Would be really silly, but I feel really good after I like shave myself down like the next morning and I take a shower. Usually get dressed up like those few days, feel fresh and clean. It's nice. Oh shit, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck, fire? Who told you to shoot that at me? Oh shit, they hit me twice. Oh, what the fuck is this? Please not again, I don't want any more. Ow! Pack, sack, and crack. Trim, shave, or wax. Uh, okay, so, Jank, um, I shave my back, and then, I don't wax anything, uh, and then I trim my sack, uh, and my stomach. So I get rid of all my belly hair. Oh, I forgot electricity. Silly me. My god, what more bullshit can they have on this path? Oh, okay, Fuck nope. Uh, I am 100% real, uh, and I give... I give honest answers to basically everything. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bro, chill the fuck out. Okay. Cool. I'm I'm glad that uh that you feel feel closer to me. Hold on, wait. Can I ask? Is it weird for men to talk about grooming? Oh shit, a giant fell on me. If if men can't talk about shaving the balls, who can? I know, Nobody right? Can. Women don't have balls. How are you gonna <laughs> talk about shaving it? Oh, that's just um heteronormative of you. To assume that I women guess. don't have balls. Um <laughs> And I'm not putting roundabouts everywhere. In fact, I'm gonna make it a personal mission to design this city so well that I don't even have to use a single roundabout. In in New Llamasville, yeah, the home of zero roundabouts. I, the I home of zero roundabouts. That that. Welcome to <laughs> New Llamasville. No roundabouts here. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that people should be able to talk about everything. Because if if we don't talk about everything, then what's the point? Designing a city with no cars. Uh, so there are not going to be many cars, ideally, in this city. Um, because I'm going to try and put in a robust public transit system. He's like, I'm making them all ride the motherfucking bus. I'll probably do a bus monorail. Are you for it? Oh, of course. Or is it just going to be city taxes? No, 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 no. They're going to get charged. Then this, why would this... they want to live there? Because they have it's... to ride the bus. Because I mean, it's it's better than owning a car, probably. If I why? make the public transit system good enough. How? <laughs> uh, because people How many then. How times you caught the bus in the rain, my bro? A number of times. Uh, actually, in order to avoid taking enjoyable? the bus sometimes, um, I would ride my skateboard even in the rain. Uh, and I was faster than the bus. So, okay. 
Yeah. So you're gonna put people through that experience, is what I'm saying. Even though you didn't like it. Well, I didn't have a car, and so that's that's what I had to do, and that's what these people are gonna have to do. I I, I understand, but I'm saying you're forcing them to have to do that. No, no, no. They can have a car if they want to, but no, they, it's gonna be robust. Stop. Who the f hit me? Where, where'd you come from, doggo? Don't hurt the doggo. You, doggo. You're trying to play dead on me. I see you alive over here. Don't hurt the doggo. The doggo hurt me. The doggo got what he deserved. Wait, wait, I don't already need roundabouts. There's no traffic. Nobody lives here. He told you he, told you, you need 600 more roundabouts. Oh, whoops, wrong button. Wait, where did it go? Oh, I see. Uh, wait, what? How do I, I guess get rid the, of... I guess the whole thing is the... Oh, there we go. Uh, is the timing. I guess I didn't come here. I must have not come here at night, or I must have not explored it at night. Yeah. Just build a roundabout central? No. Build two roundabouts. Two roundabouts? Actually, I saw a thing where somebody made a roundabout out of roundabouts. They had five roundabouts in a circle, and the, they were all connected together. So it was like a giant circle full of mini circles. It's the circle of roundabouts. Wait, <laughs> was it making people dizzy or not? Nah? Uh, I have no idea. Seven oh. roundabouts? Wait, so you want uh, seven roundabouts surrounding in a circle? W yes, why? That, that sounds appropriate. I don't think so. Why? Because that's just too many roundabouts. Well, why don't you pull the people of New Llamasville? No. Uh, I am a friendly dictator, and I will decide what is best for them. This asshole has a flamethrower. Wait, there's a real one? No way. That's fantastic. <laughs> Human ingenuity right there. Oh my god, it's real. This is it. Hold on, let me pull this up. I don't know if this is easily visible, but one, two, three, four, five. That's six. So six roundabouts in a circle. Wow. Sir, you really shouldn't be hitting people like that. How did you die? Did bigger. your friend set you on fire? That's crazy. Oh, your friend is a jerk. Friend is a jerk. Why'd you set that dude on fire? Ow! Some people just want to watch the world burn? Probably. There are bigger. See that? That just seems silly to me. Uh, it, it seems just a little bit silly to have seven roundabouts in a circle. You act like you know how roundabouts function. I mean, I do kind of know how roundabouts function. That's fair. I was just trying to think of something to say. <laughs> uh, 
I get it. Oh shit! Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. What happened? Um, there's a big machine that was over there. Red Hot Wet Blade. You just posted the Kick seven circle nice. one? Okay. Oh, it's a video. Right, bro. All right, while this is running. Hello? Let's pull this up. Is it me you're looking for? Let's look at this thing here really quick. You know how England likes to call some of its Can I cheese that with arrows? And it doesn't with make fake any sense. Well, here's one roundabout that actually deserves the title. Man, the Brits are really off their rockers lately. But this thing, which is actually seven roundabouts in one, has been oh. working for sixty years. Okay. In a regular roundabout, and a pew. traffic moves in one direction. And a pew. In Swindon Circle, cars move both ways. Also, drivers can move from point A to point B without having to drive all the way around the circle. But they do have the option to use different routes to get to the same exit in order to avoid traffic. It may look chaotic, but it's actually pretty efficient because it means less fighting for space. By the light. You just point your vehicle what? towards where you want to go, stand back. yield to cars already in the midst of the magic, then Brexit on the other side. The Brexit. The Americans may hate roundabouts. But they can actually cut serious crashes by 30%. Okay, this Swindon looks very inefficient. Only seen one fatal crash it does, in actually. So to celebrate I agree. the town anniversary, they created over 60 vintage cars to this feat of traffic engineering. Is this madness? Nope. Oh, it's this is a show. Okay. Like, they, they were, uh, they were displaying things, so it wasn't like they were trying to actually move through the roundabout there. But still, it looks absolutely insane. Uh, they should just put a traffic light there. Oh, yeah. Traffic light. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not the fucking traffic light. Oh yeah. Uh, is this a song now? Yeah, why not? Oh, I'm running low on money. Dang, you need to get rich or die trying. I know. I need to keep on growing. Shoot me with a crossbow, you jerk. Super easy to navigate and constantly. So it does not look super easy to navigate. It looks like it's pretty complicated to navigate. I mean, I can see how it keeps traffic moving. The only thing that's, that, I, like the way that the Americans can't drive, please. Some Americans can't drive, sure. But Americans as a whole certainly can drive and drive pretty well. <laughs> All right, I'd be curious to see what the numbers are. Like, what's the per capita uh, crash rate, uh, UK versus US? Not. Super investing into self-driving purely because we're terrible at driving. That's not the case. Not the case at all. Self-driving because it's convenient. And we're lazy to the extreme. Which is different. Dude almost killed me. <clears throat> But it's all six, baby. Ooh, yeah, grandma. Death rate. I said, booyah, grandma. Booyah, grandma. 
Yeah. Oh shit, I think I'm dead. I am not dead. I survived that somehow. I don't understand, but YOLO. Okay, I have like one more room to go. And and ten we fight boss. What is that per? Per capita. Well, no, because he, he just he gave me a raw number. 39,800. Yeah, per capita. That's that's the number I'm actually interested in because UK is a much smaller population. UK is like the size of California. Dang, he called y'all small. I, it's 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 not even meant as an insult or anything. It just yeah, it, it just is. Don't let Lama play you like that. That was definitely an insult. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Hey, it is the size of California. Llama is thick with a K. I am thick with two C's. With not with a K, and two a K. C's. And Two a K. C's and a K. Yeah. Oh, you don't gotta disrespect him. You don't got no K in there. Hey, no K. No yeah, K. Know, it's the good thick is two C's, you idiot. No, it's not that we suck at driving. I wonder what the car ownership rate is. Yeah, yeah, let's look at per 1,000 cars. Huh, interesting. <laughs> uh, I wonder why that is. I mean, our cities are not very well designed, that's for sure. Um... Yeah, but does that also take into account car ownership? Yeah. All wow, fourth in the world. world. Hello, Mr. Misbegotten Warrior. I didn't call my friend out. Please don't do anything. Ow. China, India, Brazil, USA. Okay, that's kind of crazy. China makes sense. Uh, I don't really know a whole lot about driving in India and Brazil, but I feel like that kind of makes sense. And then USA. How dare you do that to my friend? I think Olog didn't need my help. He could have took y'all out on his own. Yeah, I've heard the same thing about uh, China. Uh, China basically has zero road laws other than um, speed. You can't speed in China. They'll automatically ticket you. Like, there's cameras everywhere. And if it ca if uh, the camera catches you going fast on the speed limit, you get a ticket. But otherwise, there's basically no enforcement of traffic laws. Click it, boy. Ticket, bitch. I don't trust what's going on in here, but let's find out. I'd definitely be intrigued to see like what the actual reason for that is. It's certainly not a lack of roundabouts. Are you sure? I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it's it's not a lack of roundabouts. Like for shizzle sure? For shizzle sure. On the nizzle? On the nizzle. Per for shizzle. Per clizzle. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> hey, I, look, I don't care what you say. I'm a really good driver. And anybody that's driven with me would be able to back that up. I, I consider myself a really good driver, too. Actually. You could be. I, I'm not disagree. I'm not arguing on U.S. population. I actually agree with you, Jake. But I, I'm saying I'm, I'm considering myself an exception to this rule. No, but my car app can. No, I can definitely rate myself. What are you talking about? And most of the people I've driven with would say I drive too fast, but that I'm good. My, my car is a 2022. It has a connection to an application and it monitors my speed limits in driving. And it gives me a score above a 90. So I consider myself a good driver. So that's not even me rating myself. Nah, I'll rate myself. Uh, I'm a great driver with a great driving record. Yeah, you do get that. You haven't had any accidents that I know of, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm... I, uh, listen, you can't go outside outside of a car. I can't outside of a car. <laughs> I'm getting fucked up by myself, but in a car, I'm great. <laughs> Gotta keep this man out of sneakers and put him in a Honda. I'm not good on two feet. I'm great on four wheels. <laughs> so actually, I ha I have heard that stat. And I think that there is a logic to it. Most people don't travel outside of 10 miles on a regular basis. Like that's what they do. They're, they're like, uh, most daily monotonous. commute activities. Yeah. Most monotonous things. So they're probably less alert. They're more comfortable on the roads and the areas. So yeah, they get confident. I would say, but like, I, I've had, my vehicles have been in car accidents, and like, any of the ones that I've been involved in have been within the radius of 10 miles of my home, I would say. So yeah, I, I think I fall into that statistic, technically. Yeah, and people typically don't do long journeys. They stay close to home. Well, yeah, that's primarily almost all of my accidents were people hitting me. So, yeah. Okay, I've, I've been, been in been zero in. car accidents. I've been maybe around 15, I think, in the course of my life. Majority of them were not, were other people hitting us, actually. Like, I've been hit from behind a few times. I mean, I've had people cross into lanes illegally and, like, hit me or, like, cause me to hit them because of that. So because you were not being alert and you were not paying attention, traffic lights are bad. If it was a roundabout <laughs> accident when that happened, good logic would change. No, see, now I have to join the conversation because I have to justify the statement. Okay. I mean, uh, it's the open channel. You're welcome. So yeah. It's, uh, so what ended up happening was... Um, I I was actually in a courtesy vehicle 
because someone had hit my car, so my car was in for repair in the shop, and the insurance company had given me a, a like another vehicle to drive about. And um, so what ended up happening was, and I was very young. This was like I think the first year I'd started driving, but I saw a, I was at a set of lights, and I saw, um, you know, you guys have like a, a crossing man, right? Like where it tells you like when to walk, when not to walk. Yeah. So. Like, so in the UK, it's like the the walk is is a green sign, and the, the don't walk is like a red sign. It's like a little <laughs> and I and because I was a very young and very new driver, I mistook. Uh -huh. And it was really late at night. It was like you tricked you with the reverse. It was two a.m. and like the walk thing came on, and I just because I wasn't paying attention, totally my fault because I wasn't paying attention. I just assumed, oh, that's a green, I can go, and I and I, I was crossing like a dual carriageway, so like multiple lanes of traffic. And I, I wrote off the car I was in, along with a, a brand new Mercedes, like it was a sports car, I don't know what it was. The woman who was driving it, I'm shocked that she was still alive uh, because of how bad the accident was. But um, she was wow. absolutely, she ended up on the opposite side of the road, but she swerved, smashed uh, the front of my car, completely destroyed the front of the car, ripped the engine block completely off the front of the car. That kind of ripped the car in half almost. Um, Holy shit. Yeah, so, and that was totally my fault. That, but that was the, the one time that it was my fault, and it was again like it was the first shot. I think it was, wasn't even like it was within the first few months of me passing my test. So I was like it, a very new driver. Uh, yeah, I it, lost a couple people to car accidents, so I'm like cautious. Oh, I'm overly cautious. I mean, I, I definitely became more cautious after that. And and the cool yeah. thing was actually about it was that I actually the, um it never even went on my insurance policy because it was a, a courtesy vehicle. It was on like the higher company's policy. <laughs> so it didn't even affect my premium or anything. Which was, oh wow! Which like, yeah, which is great. But, uh, so yeah, on my actual record, my insurance record, there are like zero crashes that are my fault. I've, I've had, like you, Jovi, I've had loads of people just smash into me on the side, or like I'm literally the, parked and someone will, like clip me, and it's like, god damn it! I had so many. I, I'm, I'm gonna say that there's technically one on my driving record that's my fault, but I don't consider. I honestly don't think it was my fault. I just tell, think tell it was the story. my fault to our state. We, we will be the judge. What was the story? I was, I was backing out of a parking spot and the, like the car pretty much like coming through the lane, uh, hit my car like as I was backing out. That's your fault. It, it's considered my fault in New York State. The thing is, if you've seen the way the like the car hit, like his driver's side front corner hit my passenger side back corner, so I was already in the lane and turned. That he hit me. Uh, yet I, I, I've been in accidents like that, and in the UK, the whole of the UK, it would still be considered your fault. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. It's considered, it's yeah. considered my fault. Yeah, I understand that. I'm just saying, like, I, I honestly don't think it was my fault. I think no, that no, fucker he, wasn't paying attention. Yeah, he wasn't paying attention. He was probably speeding as well. Otherwise, he would have been able to slow down and break in time if he was probably mm -hmm. paying speed limits. I, I they, they asked me, they asked me too if he honked his horn or anything. And I said no. I got no notification that person was there. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was I don't think it, I understand by the laws it's my fault. I'm supposed to be watching behind me. I don't think that fucker was paying attention. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I will completely be like on your side from a logic perspective. But yeah, I get that. Yeah. So uh, that's the only one that's on my record. It's my fault. Everything else has been people hitting me. I actually T-boned a guy, and it was his fault because he crossed the lanes in a parking lot. I was actually the person driving down the parking lot like normal, and he just came cutting through, like speeding through the lanes. And he cut through like a it was like a Wegmans parking lot, a big parking lot, like a, a like a big grocery store for us mm -hmm. in New York. Mm -hmm. And he came cut. I was going no more than like ten miles an hour down this because it was a parking lot. I had just gotten out of the like parking spot, and he comes diving through like only twenty or so miles an hour. It like not even through the stop portions of normal traffic like just cutting through where parked cars would be and he just dove into the lane and i t-boned him oh. but that that the insurance all the insurance companies blamed him for because he a he wasn't following like traffic yeah. rules do you think that's the yeah. that's the weird thing that that is in america is that you guys don't have like dedicated lanes for overtaking like you can overtake in any lane i find that's crazy and that's probably one of the reasons why you guys have so many accidents on your roads. I mean, uh, we're supposed to only be overtaking on the left side. Like yeah. The left, 
Like, yeah, that's not, not what I saw in. Uh, it's in, not what in happens. Florida. It's yeah. definitely not what happens. People don't obey that rule at all. Yeah, yeah that's. But like, that's. Just, like, I just remember like the two weeks I was in Florida a few years ago. Every single day, I saw people on the like on the highway that had accident. Like every single day in the UK, you just don't yeah. see that. Um, um, yeah, the thing you gotta know about Florida, it's the Russia of America. So. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't surprise me I mean there's a reason why a lot of really crazy stories start off with Florida man does and then something yeah it really is like there's so many stories of a Florida man does something and it's just something absolutely insane there's a whole entire subreddit dedicated to it a lot of the stories I hear about Leisure Llama does, Leisure Llama Man does, shaves ball sack. You shave your back? That's insane. Yeah. I shaved my back. Actually, I, I got my back shaver because I bought the same one that Jovi has. How, how, do, you, how do you. Oh, you did? How, how yeah. How do you even do that? How do you, That's how cool. do you even like, aim to shave? How do you even get your oh, back? Shit. Uh, so it's, uh, it's called the back blade. It's like attached to a stick. Oh, Here, let me yeah, let me show like, you. It's like a razor set. Yeah, that's like do. attached to a stick. I think uh, so like I I think I've I lucked out in the genetic lottery. I am not a very hairy person at all. Like I have very I have almost no hair on my back, and I have very little hair on my arms and my legs. Just like, I'm like a fucking chia pet, dude. It's like mandatory. <laughs> yeah, no, I have way too much hair on my back, and so here, let me see if I can get a good. Uh, uh, I, owe, I owe that one. I don't know if you know who the YouTuber is, Alpha M, but I, I think I owe that to him because he was the one who recommended like those products mm. to me. Let's see. Let's see if I can find a good good picture of it. This is it. This isn't a very good picture, though. It basically looks like a small uh, lawnmower. You ever see a back scratcher? Yeah. Like you ever see a yeah. back scratcher? Yeah. yeah. It's like a so, back scratcher, but with razor blades. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So you see, it's got like this this handle here, and then that right there, those are uh, blades, and you can see it from this side right here. And so what you do is you put it on your back, and then just kind of like drag it up. Drag, drag it upwards, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. It, you it, could take the unit that holds the razors off too, and like use it for other parts of your body if you want. So then it so like works on other parts. So continuing on with the grooming conversation, have you have you guys never just considered waxing? Considering it would probably be a, a a long, like it would last longer than shaving. But obviously, like it rips, it's ripping the hair out from the roots. So you'd end up not having to do it as often. Obviously, you have to go to a I, specialist to do it. I, I, I think at the rate that I shave, I would end up uh, like it would grow back. The waxing would make a difference. Um, I think I'd be spending tried? money for nothing. I, I mean, I pluck hair off of my face by default, so kind of. Ah, uh, yeah, but I think your face, face hair always grows much faster than most other hair. I mean, I don't know how hairy hairy you are, how quickly your hair grows, but generally uh, I find facing... 100% hairy, that's what I have. Oh, okay. He's a gremlin, basically. Yeah. Around. If I did it on a, like, if I was, if I consider doing it, like, a regular basis, like, I tend to, like, in the summer, probably be, like, once a month or once every, like, six weeks. Yeah, I think you should, uh, you should trial it, do a, do a back wax and see how long it actually lasts. I reckon, from what I hear, I mean, I, I had an ex-girlfriend once who shaved a small portion of my arm, and the hair, that was about 15 years ago, and the hair in that little portion, that little strip, still hasn't grown back. That's how little hair I have. And how... Uh, wow. Little... Yeah, I don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's... it's, it's I have disgustingly small amounts of hair, like everywhere on my body. Uh, and on my head. It's the only depressing part of it. I wish I was hairier. Well, you, you wish you had more hair on your head. You, you don't wish that you were hairier. I don't believe I, that. I, would I think I would sacrifice more hair on my body if I had more hair on my head. I think like. But it doesn't actually, work I like live, that. I could, I could live with, I could live with a. You're like, a look, Jovi I don't grow hair. Yeah, I could live with a Jovi style problem. Not, I'm not making out like you've got a massive hair problem, Jovi. I apologize oh, I if it comes to. I do. <laughs> I ever. Yeah, I uh, make jokes about it all the time. You good? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I would definitely take that. Like, if I could. I mean, I'm not that fussed about head hair, but it'd be nice to have my, my head hair because it, it made me look younger for, for a start. I think I definitely look much older because I, I don't have head hair. 
Yeah, what about you, Lama? Have you never considered, uh, never considered the old wax? No. Uh, I actually, I was relatively opposed to the idea of doing any sort of body grooming up until I think like, uh, actually around about where my, my opinion on that change was, was about where I actually met Jovi. Um, and then since then I've sort of decided to do a little bit more like, body grooming. And, and, and then you were like, holy shit, it could get as bad as that. I need to start shaving now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not even. Uh, I've always been pretty hairy. Um, <clears throat> in fact, uh, when I was younger, um, I went. Me and my family were going, and uh, we're meeting up with a bunch of family up in Washington, and we were going down to like this this local um, part of the river. That's kind of like a watering, uh, like a. What's the word I'm looking for? Where you, where you go to swim. Um, pond, a pond. It, it wasn't a pond, a though. Lake. Like, it, it was it was a part of the river that's particularly deep where swimming you can hole? go swimming. Swimming hole. There we go. Swimming hole. Yeah. He's like, what's um, that hole you swim in? <laughs> it, it was a swimming hole. Um, and so I took off my shirt, and I was, I was wearing um, shorts, and I was walking down to this river, and this it's fat Mexican thing. kid... Um, stands up out of the water, points directly out of, at at me, and goes, "You're hairy." Hey, wearing the sweater. What? No, I I wasn't wearing. Oh, it's, <laughs> yeah, basically. Give me a second to get that as well. Yeah, and so he 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 shouted out to everybody that was like there, really loud, like "You're hairy." Um, and so I've I've and that was back when I was like. 15 or 14 so somewhere like around there <laughs> so, you're saying, so, you're, so you're saying you are now mentally scarred for life because of some <laughs> dickhead dickhead 12 year old Mexican kid that pointed at you and pointed out your your uh, that's about right. disfiguring <laughs> body disfiguring body the body. water over here talking about <laughs> I mean, I guess so. Like, I still remember that extremely vividly. Um, uh, our personal oh God, experiences just... shape who we are. Yeah, no, 100%. You've got so much hair, that could be used as a flotation device. So. <laughs> I, so, I have something very similar, Lamo, to that story, like, uh, to a degree. Uh, I was a Boy Scout, and we did, uh, we did a trip one time. Like, uh, I put my camera and, uh, the damn you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got made fun of for smelling as a uh, like oh, at that yeah. one point, and uh, that made like that made me dive into uh, like scents as a man. So like I'm very like I really like fragrances. I'm like into fragrances too, and that was like one of those experiences for me that kind of shaped me because I uh, like I I'd, I'll never forget that like mm -hmm. those really moments. It's really interesting. Um, so you like so you're always very conscious then about. Like, not not smelling yeah yeah like my personal hygiene i'm more, like very conscious about that's, a, that's like almost, how it's so yeah. now that's he just, just walks around smelling exactly like strawberry milk because <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking delicious okay i i prefer chocolate milk you know. um, everyone has what about banana milk milk? no i'm not a fan of banana milk uh, uh, I mean, I like banana milk, but if it's like the sh like the straight up like banana milk, banana milk, not like the banana flavor. Wait, are we, are we talking about banana milk, banana milk, or are we talking about like llama milk, banana milk? Uh, I've I mean, never heard of banana milk. milk. From llama. Llama's banana. Uh, I might be <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! That's like conversation what? from yesterday. Llama has bananas. Yeah. At least one, I'm hoping. Yeah, we, we, we talk, yeah we talk I have a banana. Old and moldy, right? No. My banana's flawless. Hmm, doubt. Flawless victory. Yeah, I, I've never been, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's strange, like, again, like, you guys have had these experiences, because I've never, I've never had that issue, like, I've never been concerned about my smell, and in fact, like, I, I went through a phase of, like, using fragrances when I was in my early 20s. And then I read, um, I can't remember what, what self-help guru it was. It was like a dating doctor. I can't remember who it was. One of the big ones. And he was talking about how, like, you should always, um, like, men who are confident should not worry about, like, their smell. And they should kind of give, and don't, and 
your body odor is like kind of pheromones and stuff. And so then I stopped and I, and it actually made me more successful. I felt, or maybe it was just the, the confidence factor of like, I, I'm confident that I don't smell bad. Um, and my natural scent isn't a bad scent. That kind of, uh, yeah. So I've, I've just never had that experience. I'm not like I'm not ashamed of my natural scent though because I don't actually think my natural scent is bad. I've never, I think it was just like a, a, a experience as a young kid of being made fun of that like. I, I mean, this fucking dude was probably fucking running around the damn forest smelling like ass. <laughs> probably, <laughs> I was a young kid. I probably exactly. I could have completely smelled kid, bad. Like, like unless unless you're just like have like anal retentive parents and they they like cement that shit into your head like super young all kids are fucking weird smelling you know like i don't i don't i don't know if it's something like i'm necessarily uh ashamed of anymore but i'm just like uh conscious of like yeah. scents and i'm into fragrances now it's like i smell i smell what's your, pride what's your favorite fragrance at the moment uh i i you? really i have a versace fragrance that i'm wearing and i also have molecule one that i have a oh, bottle of I like Versace. Um, yeah, Versace smells good. Yeah, it's I'm, like bright. I also like. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it ever made it to America. Actually, like, did, did any of the John Paul Gaultier stuff get to America? Like blue jeans, red jeans, green jeans. You get a whole I'm like jeans, sure. jeans range. It was like you, you get different colored bottles, and it was like there was six. Three of them were for men, and three of them were for women, and it was like based mm -hmm. on the color, which ones were which. Um. Those were amazing scents, and the cool thing was, if you owned like, if you like, oh, pick the three men's ones, you could kind of mix them a little bit as well. It's gonna give you even like more <laughs> variety. It's cool. Um, Molecule also, mixes well with stuff, which is one of the reasons why I wanted it. And I think my favorite of all time is um, Izzy Miyake. It was, it's my scent. I'm gonna if I am ever gonna wear anything, which these days is almost never. But That's not a bad stuff, thing. Like if you're not, I feel like even if you're not into fragrances as a man, it can't hurt to have a like a scent you'll wear, yeah, even if Signature. it's just for like special occasions. Sig Signature scent, man. You walk in the room, people are like, shit. <laughs> Nav's walk in the room. They know I'm, I'm, I'm just the only guy as well that wears it. It's also like a really old scent, <laughs> so like, yeah, you've gotta have a signature scent. Scent is, well. the, scent is one of the quickest ways to triggering like memory for people and emotion. Yeah, 100%. So like. Still, uh, in fact, like there's uh, one of my ex-girlfriends used to wear. I can't remember the name of the fragrance now, it's, it's, but it's like my, it's my favorite fragrance for any woman to wear. And any time, was it her fault? No, oh, 100% her fault. And but it's like any time <laughs> I walk into any place now, if I go to a bar, club, anywhere, a restaurant, if I smell that fragrance, like you say, it's that sense memory of just like remembering who she was, what she was, what she was about, what she looked like, the the kind of time the good times that we had together all that shit just comes flooding back into my head um yeah like 100 percent, completely agree that fragrance is a massive kind of stimulation on memories and remembering stuff mm -hmm. so, yeah how about you nick you must have a signature fragrance uh, don't say got, don't I... say us <laughs> uh, uh, I, I have to look it up because i don't know the name of it on hand just because i'm There's a there's a service in America that's kind of nice if you're like curious about it. Called it's called Scentbird, and they do like uh like these little kind of like small little trial bottles that they'll send you for like ten or fifteen bucks, mm -hmm. and you can get like the try trials of different fragrances which are supposed to last you like a month if you used it like daily pretty much. And that that like, wasn't bad. Like they have them. all types of fragrances, like everything. Is it one of those subscription services? So like everyone seems. To it can be, yeah. Everyone's moving yeah. to those subscription services now. I did it for a while. Uh, that's how I found the Versace I really liked. I found a, a couple others that I liked, and I probably would have kept using the service, but COVID kind of happened, and I stopped using fragrances daily. Cause, I mean, I don't naturally smell bad, so I, I mean, it's just me and Nick. You just don't so. give a shit about smelling nice for Nick. That's what it comes down to, right? I, 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 mean, I mean, as long as he don't smell. Bad. I shower daily. It's like I don't smell bad. I shower, shower daily. Not, as, I know, I, no, as long as I get you're it. not trying and going out of your way to smell just absolutely disgusting. No, no, no. I get it. You know, you, you're in a relationship for long enough. You know, you stop caring about the, your partner. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just take them for granted. <laughs> I, I get my it. Home muffins. 
This nigga salty. He's, he's salty. He's salty. I ate his chocolate chip muffin. How about you, Leisure Nips? What's your uh, what's your fragrance of the choice? Uh, so I tend I so I I uh, whenever I'm going anywhere uh, that I'm basically gonna be around a bunch of other people, then um, I just shower with like a scented a scented uh, soap, and it's uh, Old Spice Swagger. Um, so it's old Old Spice, as you said. It basically, I really like Old Spice Swagger, uh, but if I'm going somewhere relatively fancy or with um oh, with somebody that like, I want to spell nice next to I have a a bottle of um what, what's it called of, uh, fart spray that, yeah. yeah I just I just cover myself in in fart spray because that's the that's my natural scent no um I think it's like Ralph Lauren red or something like that I, I forget, but it smells pretty good, I think. And whenever I wear it, I get compliments. So, um, well, what, what, are the, what, 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 what do the guys say when they compliment you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not, not typically from dudes. Um, so I, I think that it's working I, because I, I, I like, get uh, it. I get it. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just yanking your chain. For some reason, yeah. I thought, yeah. Uh, for some reason, I thought you were going to say something along the lines of, "Oh, well, my 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 scent is generally uh, like what I've hunted the day before. I just cover myself in the blood." Of the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just smear deer blood or or uh, pig pig blood on my face before going on to en to any special occasions in order to assert my dominance. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely what I do. And if, I'm, and if I'm and if I'm really feeling frisky, I'll I'll pierce the bladder and just spray the <laughs> contents. I just shower with the contents. And, uh... Okay, all right. Uh. So I, found, I found the two that I that I kind of like really enjoyed. I was testing a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is uh, it's by Ryan Graham. It's the lore. Oh yeah, that was not bad actually. I like that. Uh, v a l o. -R. Oh, okay. So we would pronounce that Valor. I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's it's for perfume. Yeah, I mean, it's a strange spelling, but I think in the UK, we like, I think actually, uh, you're, would, you're probably I would, more I right. Could have pronounced it Valor, but I was like, maybe it's that. I just never heard heard of being said. I, I think in America, oh. I think American Americans would would call that Valor, and the UK guys, the way we spell Valor and Valor is like different to you guys, I think. So I think. Oh well, yeah, I'm Valor. Canadian, so I talk about oh. like you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the other one is. Uh, it's uh, uh, Burberry, Mr. Burberry. Oh, I like Burberry, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was good too, yeah. Scottish brand. Well, I haven't, I haven't, well, I haven't smelled like any of this since then. Like, uh, like, good for evenings and dates. See, and I'm like, uh, that Burberry, that was like citrusy kind of bright, right? Uh, I think that, like, that one had, had a little bit of citrus. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a big fan of, uh, I'm not a big fan of musky scents. It has to, like, yeah. it has to be right, you know. There's, there's musk, and then there's like, uh, you like, uh, okay, all right, like, you, yeah. like, I, I could, I could smell this and tell that you are a man, somehow. Do, do you guys have like? I feel, um, like, oh, I I feel like you can't hurt to have. My bad. No, no, go on. Sure. I was gonna say, I, I, I think it's not bad to have like a musky, like kind of scent that you that signature, and like a kind of bright, like, like floral citrus scent that signature. I wouldn't go I don't go floral either I don't go musky I don't go floral and I think I know the reason why I'm actually like thinking back in my memory I think I my dad used to wear a musky scent and I hey what's up Stacy hey Stacy and I and I and, and I hated my and I hate my father therefore that's that's probably why I dislike musky scents and <laughs> my mo and, and my mother and my mother wears floral scents and I think that's like so anytime I smell that anything floral is like it just reminds me of my mother so I don't like, I, I wouldn't wear it myself um, I'm, I'm gonna throw a little shade here but uh my pops to me used to wear like cheap kind of shit clothes and he used to wear Old Spice <laughs>
There's nothing wrong with Old Spice. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with Old Spice, and I get compliments for it fairly often. So it's like it's like because the problem is like there's there's dudes who just smell like ass out there. Uh, so, so it's and, like and Old Spice fixes that. Guy, it's fine. I mean, also at the end of the day, Lama could have turned around and said, "I use Axe body spray," and then and then that would oh, have been a real. Oh, Old Spice ain't far from that. It's, it's like uh, slightly above that. Slightly. Old Spice is uh, significantly you better than Axe. Yeah. I used to wear Axe for a while. Old Spice is gross. There you go, Lama. Straight from uh, straight from the only female in the group at the moment. Old Spice is gross. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, you are gross. <laughs> no, he's calling Lama gross. I, I like Old Spice Swagger. I think that it smells good, <laughs> and I get compliments for it. So, yeah. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I said to you, like, what's his name? Like, we'll talk to him directly. Who's this guy giving you compliments <laughs> about this Old Spice Swagger? It's not dudes. Whatever Terry Crews so I don't know what it smells like yeah, well, to, to yeah. make a judgment so his, call. Is, is his name Terry Crews? I'm surprised that Lama even knows what Old Spice is. Like <laughs> everybody knows. It's like knowing what a grocery store is. Everybody no, I know that. But I mean, like he is very sheltered, and he. Doesn't uh, yeah, but he's he's been. He, he's, he's not sheltered. What are you talking about, Stacy? Lama well, is a man of the world. I, I mean, I <laughs> Legion tips. I did tell him that I do, I do need to take him shopping though. My probably. Yeah, yeah probably. Because my wardrobe yeah, is pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, you, you need help with the wardrobe department, and I could definitely help you with that. I don't think you need help with the wardrobe department. I think, if anything, you need to wear less clothes. <laughs> I, yeah, why do you think you're Wait, you, do you own a Henley llama? Sorry, oh no, what? Henley, like, um, once they said that's what happened. I don't know what a Hemley is, but I do have a, a couple long sleeve shirts that are buttoned up. And I have a couple oh, of wow. short sleeve shirts that are buttoned up, too. Yeah, and I have like, a sport coat. Are they plain? Is it, is it just, like, one color on it? Or do they have, like, a pattern? Or. Uh. You got a shirt with flames on it, huh? No, I, I don't have any shirts of flames on them. One of them is like a black and lighter. It's like a dark gray. And okay. it's got, got sort of like a... Um, like, I don't want to quite say just, check. Just, just go be right back mode. Put it on. Come back. Do a little spin. Show you what it looks like. Where do you normally shop at? Uh, so last time I bought a dress shirt was at least two years ago. Uh, so I don't remember. I think I got one at like Banana Republic. Uh, I got why two at Men's Warehouse. What, why do you uh, need a dress shirt? I don't understand the fascination with dress, dress shirts. So there are certain Everybody occasions where you shirts. should wear a dress shirt. Like, uh, uh, every, every man I should wore them. own dress shirts. Well, mm, and they should own at least a suit or two. Oh, like you, you should, you should own, you should own at least two suits. I, I agree yeah. with that. I think, and you should own dress shirts to match those suits. I don't think you need to make a, an entirely separate set of like dress shirts to own on top. Yeah, of I don't, I don't think you okay. need more than a few. I agree. So I, I don't have like a suit suit. Um, I, I just have a sport, a sport coat. Um, but Does it match any dress pants you have? Yes. Then you, that that'll count. Yeah, it, no, it, it's, I, it's. I don't think that doesn't count. Come on, you are letting him off lightly there, Toby. That does not count. It it, it counts. It counts enough. It isn't a suit now. It'll it'll it'll, right. it'll, it'll it'll get you out of a jam if you're like shit. I need something for tomorrow. But like, it's not. It's it's not like. I mean, I think that depends on your level of profession, like what environment you're stepping into uh, as a man. In I, most I situations, that. that'll that'll cover it. I, I think, like, so I always go with two suits because I think one, you should have a suit mm -hmm. for any kind of professional situation you need to go into, and two, you should have a That's suit formal. for a formal dinner or an occasion, like mm -hmm. you know, a wedding or something, right? Like, mm -hmm. that, that, those are your two. That, that's why you should have a, a minimum of two. Have as many as you mm -hmm. want on top of that. that. Those are my two that I would have. I would agree. I agree. Well, 
Mama, I, Mama, I give you brownie points because you did mention it, Banana Republic, so that's not my store that's, at all. That, Banana Republic is a terrible brand. Do you not buy Banana Republic? <laughs> Why? Like I, don't, I well, so one I don't I dislike any brand that overcharges for clothes. Clothes are not expensive. Okay, wait. So yeah, they are pricey, and some of their clothes are kind of basic. But I mean, some all of their clothes are basic. Uh, like I said, I you still get points. <laughs> don't don't worry about Jane. You still get some points. Okay. So like, Lama Lama has money, so he can spend his money whatever he wants to. Put it right, Banana Republic. <laughs> I have some. Uh, well, talk about look, talking about labor conditions, right? Banana Republic has terrible labor conditions. They don't have any animal welfare policy. They don't have any in, in ethical stuff about their environmental impact on, on the environment. They don't really use sustainable stuff. Like from a how ethical the brand is, it's a terrible brand. I'm not going to spend a significant amount of money on an expensive item of clothing if the brand isn't actually like. A, a, a brand that's actually doing good for the environment. But just go to a, go to a. What, what's a cheap brand in America? I don't know. What, like a Sears. Is shit, is Sears cheap? Or Wal uh, yeah. Walmart? Doesn't Sears? Walmart. Doesn't Sear like, I would go to. I'd go to. I'd go to Walmart and buy like I don't a know Walmart. Walmart. Yeah, they. I played. They went out of business. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy a dress shirt from Walmart because at the end of the day, like you're gonna get a, a, something that's decent enough quality for a decent price. Like there's no need to go out and spend. How much is a Banana Republic shirt? Like 70, 80 bucks? I did not no spend reason. that much on a shirt. Uh, yeah, I would never spend that much on a, mm -mm. On, on a dress shirt. I mean, no, I'm, I'm pretty it. sure it was like four, 40, 40 bucks. Even, even that to me. Is, you could, you could be fashionable hard. without spending a lot of money, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't spend a lot of money, and I only really use the dress shirts for like special occasions and stuff. Um, or like uh, job interviews or that kind of thing. I don't really, like, I don't walk around wearing them. I typically wear like regular t-shirts if I'm going out and about. That's okay. We're just gonna spice up your wardrobe just a little bit so you have like a variety. Sure. Be careful. She might put you in Spice Girls clothes. Oh, oh, I was gonna <laughs> no. say that. Like, I would, I would be very, wary, I would be very, very, very. I knew you would say that. I would be very wary on Stacy's picks. Like, no disrespect, Stacy, but like, men have very particular okay. tastes when it comes I, yeah. to fashion. I, I'm, a, I'm a very, sim I'm a very simple guy. I, I actually, I think, like Jovi, I think, has got good taste, but I would never wear some of the stuff he wears because I don't. That's just not my style. I, I go oh. with very. Very plain standard colors. I generally don't go with patterns on my shirts or my my t-shirts. It, it has to kind of really be like okay, single so single I, colors. I would like everybody in here to take a look in um, a Discord chat right now, if you're able to look at Jovi's uh, profile picture. That shirt that he's wearing, the sunglasses that he's wearing. Guess what? I got him that. Yeah, but I would. That I don't, shirt I don't, you I did not I, get. I, I'd pick that oh, shirt out. You got the sunglasses, you liar. I I just I I, 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 I just I, 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 I you were there at the mall when I went to the mall to buy the damn shirt. Okay. And I and I dislike that shirt. So that that isn't a testament to like you, don't you, like you that picking that shirt? shirt. I dislike that shirt. I wouldn't wear that shirt personally. I mean, well, I think you probably so, have no style. You probably have zero style. I would completely. Yeah, I would yeah. completely. I would completely agree with you. Look like Miami Vice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I completely agree with you, though. I do have zero stuff. I mean, like I said, I go with very, like, stick to primary colors. Like, I did for a long boy. time too, man. Yeah, yeah. I I just some recently people, started wearing flamboyant yeah. clothes. Yeah, some people can, you can pull it off. I've, like I've seen the stuff you wear. I'm like shit. Like you well, pull it off. I, I can't pull that shit off. I don't think I, I can. Told him, I told Joby to get that shirt, and when he was at Cedar Point, he had people coming up to him and telling him that they liked his shirt. Hey, Lama, True. I like yeah. the shirt you're wearing right now. You stick to that kind of shirt. I mean, I like the shirt, it's too. It's it's a very basic gray T-shirt that's covers, got, uh, covers the, like, covers they can use it for sports and stuff. That, that, that complements yeah. your that complements your pasty white skin perfectly. You continue to wear Hey, you know what? That's not pasty <laughs> white. That is tan. You know what? <laughs> that right there is tan. I got sunburned. Once, and I was tan. What what time? 
Yeah, all it takes one is one time? sunburn. Yeah. See, one I, time? I, again, I think I think in terms of in terms of fashion, I think like I, I would go with shirts of that design all day long, just with varying colours. Like that's that's pretty much my style. Um, and then for dress shirts, again, it would be like a standard colour. It'd be like I've got I've got a white. I mean, I've got quite a lot of dress shirts because I I was at once at one point in my life doing a job where I needed to wear a suit every day. So I've got like. 15 suits um, with a bunch of different shirts to match. Um, very rarely do My I wear patterns. My dad has a ton of shit like that yeah. too. I, I very rarely I'm do pattern stuff. I do. I do think. I, like I am flamboyant with ties. I think that's where you can make the you can make the statement. Like so. You can. You know, yeah. Yeah. And that that's that's the route I go down. If I'm gonna wear a dress shirt, I'd wear like a nice, really kind of colorful, or even a like a waist sash. I don't know what you call those in America. Like when you have a that belt? wrap around. No, not a belt. But a wrap around like sash. Kind of goes around your waist, hmm. like, like a garter you... belt sort of thing, no, uh... or like a cover bun. Like I, I kind of know what you're talking about. It's like I think I know what you're talking about. I like just don't know what the word is. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the I don't know what the Americans would call it. To be honest, I'm gonna try and find a photograph of someone wearing. I, I I think I know what you're talking about. I just don't know what it's called. Cumberbund. There you go, actually. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Cumberbund. Yeah, so I, I think those those work really well. I, I I also think, like, if you want to go, like, full-on three-piece suit with the uh, the waistcoat, like, you, you get something that's... And, again, I would spend money on it. If you're going to buy, like, a dress suit that you want to, like, make sure is a statement piece for when you go out to dinner somewhere, go somewhere. Like, the suit doesn't have to be expensive, but then after you buy it, take it to a tailor's, Taylor, get it, yeah. Get it, get it, get it tailored to you. A hundred percent will make even a mediocre suit look fucking amazing because you just tailored it. You you should be willing to invest some money into a suit though, because yeah, you would 100%. want the suit to last you some years. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I've just never gotten like a suit and had it tailored. So you still a young. You still a young gun. You got some time. But Honestly, like when I when I wear like my tailored suits, I, w I walk out of the house feeling like a million bucks. Like it, it genuinely like just boosts my confidence so much. I just know I look, uh, I look the best I'm gonna look. Um, and uh, but I own, I very rarely wear them. Like and these days, like almost all my friends are married and or like they've had their engagement parties, they've had all that stuff. So I, I very rarely get a chance to pull them out. It's like kind of you never just do it to do it. I used uh, to. I, I used to, but like these days, you know, it's me, the wife, and the kids. We're going to like, you know, like our version of the Olive Garden is where we end up these days, rather than like some fancy, fancy ass restaurant. Um, so it's very it's like, like Nando's. <laughs> yeah, Nando's. I mean, it's very. It's like I, I will occasionally like due to work be invited to somewhere that's like really really fancy. It's not market dinner. It's like cool. I'll pull it out, but I very rarely just do it for myself because I just don't don't often have the need to do do it. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, actually, I might do it next week because I'm going to a gig next week with uh, a, a group you guys might actually know. It's uh, from your ends, Llama. Emotional Oranges. Have you heard of Emotional Oranges? I've never heard I of have. Emotional Oranges. They, they, I think they were discovered in LA. Uh, they, they were discovered by Drake. They're an R&B yeah. slash soul slash soul uh, group. They're who Rory uh, fucks with. Really? I might have I might have heard of them. I just haven't. Yeah. Really yeah, they're, they're, them. they're fairly new on the scene. I think they've only been around since like 2017. Yeah. Um, yeah, very new. But yeah, they're doing a they're doing a a, a world tour. So they're in the UK, so I'm going to be checking them out on Tuesday next week. Tuesday night. Random night for them to be doing a, a set. But uh, cool. Check it out. How the fuck did I get frostbite? Oh, so I might make an effort there. Lama, bring up your traffic. Ninety percent. You could get that to a hundred easily with a few runabouts. No, uh, it counts like the cars that are just kind of like moving on the road. There's no stoppages anywhere. There is. I can see a bit of orange there. No, that's that's just because there's a lot of cars moving through here. But there's if you look, they're not they're not really stopping. And if <laughs> I were to put in, he says that literally as they stop. 
if I put in a timed traffic light, it'd be even better. But no, it wouldn't. yes, it would. Bye, Stacy. Guarantee your timed traffic light would make it worse. You, you'd get longer tailbacks. There you go. See, or instantly you're getting you're getting like kind of people waiting there. That, that's the problem. Like when you put in um, lights at a crossroads, it makes it look cleaner just because there's no cars going through the crossroads. Um, but all you're doing is is causing tailbacks. Whereas putting a roundabout, you it's a constant flow of traffic. You you'll never have like unless you've got a significant throughput of cars, you won't have so, tailbacks. And if you and if you and if your if your input of cars is that much with traffic lights, it would be much much worse. No, no. Um, I mean, look, I mean, look, you're, you're able like tailbacks like almost you're, you're getting like there you go almost a hundred percent to almost to the next junction on the right hand side like cars. Yeah, but no, that, that's it? not even. If I were to put in a roundabout, it but, would but probably. It I didn't make it worse. <laughs> you can literally. It's clearing it out. It's it's, it's not out, though. But it's still yeah. queuing though. It's still queuing, and without that light, it wasn't actually queuing. So you, you've technically made it worse by adding a light. No, 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 no. So the way that it works basically is that the people of the game ignore the traffic light. Um, in the with the vanilla traffic light, uh, they they just kind of like keep on going. It, it's a little bit more haphazard. But when you add in the timed traffic light, it actually puts in more set rules for like what the light is doing, and it's a little bit more nuanced. So like you can have cars turning right, turning left, uh, going straight, and then cars Ready. only turning right. That kind of stuff. Roundabout. Hmm. Timed traffic light is doing just a fine job there. Has it increased your thing? What's your traffic saying now? Is it higher than ninety percent? I mean, it's at eighty-eight percent, but so it's gone. So it's gone down from when you. It so ninety-one, ninety-one, eighty-eight. But my population is also growing. Yeah, sure, buddy. Okay, more. The, the, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I were to put in a roundabout, it would probably increase throughput a little bit. But the roundabout is limited and takes up a lot of space. Uh, so those, if, you, if you put roundabouts in in the first place, you could you would have accounted for that space. But I don't have to account for that space. You, you will uh, you will see the light. There will be a point when you'll hit a certain like population. You'll be like, shit, I should have put in more roundabouts. Nav mm -mm. was right. No, no, I'm going to make it my goal to not put in a single roundabout. All right. We'll see how that works out for you. I think it's going to work out just fine. <laughs> Quickly goes to like the Steam Workshop find find mod that makes sure that traffic always works. Out. <laughs> <laughs> no, if anything, um, the the mod that I have makes it more difficult, not easier, because uh, there's a button you can put on. The default for the game is to despawn if too many cars are backed up, and uh, this mod basically gets rid of that so no cars ever despawn um so it makes it more difficult than actually the the way that the creators intended um because no cars disappear get rid of all those people This, this just looks familiar to your last city. Uh, I was going to say that. You, you, yeah, you're, you're basically just replicating what you did before. What? No, I'm not. You Are you be, sure? Like, you should have. You should have gone with the theme. Like, you know, I'm going to make this the shape of a of the Ukrainian flag or something. I don't know. Like, you could should have gone. I'm going to make this like my name across the entire thing. Like, a, I don't know something. Well, I'm trying. Kind of I'm trying to make a well-designed city. Like the, well, you were doing, you were trying to do that before, and you failed because you didn't put in enough roundabouts. Now you're but no, mistakes all what? <laughs> I no, I didn't fail. My last city was working really, really well. Uh, yeah, the, uh, okay, so the reason why I restarted is because I didn't have auto save turned on, and you might be able to see where this is going. Um, I did my whole entire stream, and then the game crashed locked up and crashed and so i lost about five and a half hours worth of work and i'm not willing i'm not willing to go back and redo it 
I'd much rather start fresh than than redo another five hours of work. Oh, so you'd rather redo like thirty or forty hours of work rather than redo five? Exactly. Except I can do it better this time without roundabouts. You're doing it the same. Jv just thought said so, and I agree with him. I agree with everything he says. He is a very wise man. <laughs> it's but it's not the same. It's different. JB for Prez. I, I mean, don't I just want to be president at the moment. Maybe in twenty years, ask me. Nah, you don't want to be president. Like, in twenty years, I'm voting for Kanye. <laughs> I'm, I would be surprised if Kanye is still alive. Yeah, I'd be too, to be fair. He's running, oh right? He's, 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 he's already said he's confirmed he's running for like the next term, or is he? Or was that just bullshit? Ramblings of a madman. It's honestly day by day with that dude. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I mean, even this llama, this is like identical to the, the, the shit configuration of roads that you were doing last time. This is a like, parklow. I like yeah. parklows. They're, they're good. They're really good at moving people onto yeah, and off of the freeway. I thought you were going to do something, something different. No. Alright, what do you want to see, Jank? Roundabouts. No, but that would be the same <laughs> too, though, technically. Stupid question. But So you just no, want no, me no, to make no. this a roundabout? I don't, that, I don't think that would be the same. I think if he overloaded on roundabouts, that would be something different. Like, literally, there is zero crossroads. Every single thing is a roundabout. Every crossroads right. is just a roundabout. You know what? Fine. No. Fine. Don't know let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's, let's just... Let's just do it. Here we go. Let's, no, no, first we need to scrap the city because you, you've already invested too much time. Let's go from the beginning. Uh uh, I'm not restarting. <laughs> Alright, just give me one sec. I'm gonna upgrade everything here. Why do you listen to me? I don't understand. I'm I do idiot. this I'm because I want to. I'm, I'm an idiot at the best of times. Let's do it. Every single okay. intersection, a roundabout. Uh, I feel good right now. I've helped two people kill male. I'm not confident enough to fight them myself yet, but <laughs> I've helped two people kill them, and I feel good about that. <laughs> but I know it's possible. <laughs> Jovi for waifu. Jovi for waifu. Eternity wants to make you a waifu, Jovi. Gotta get in line. Uh, he doesn't make muffins, so just like, no. <laughs> I'm working on it, okay? I'll get on the muffin thing. I make a good banana bread, though. I'm gonna be attempting to make, um, avocado bread this weekend. Ooh. Mm. It's supposed to be healthier and better than banana bread, because you don't need to use any form of fat, because avocados are already quite a fatty, yeah. fatty thing. But otherwise, it's, 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 it's an identical recipe otherwise, basically like banana, banana bread, but with no oil or butter. So I don't get okay. this obsession with avocado. Like, I get guac. I love guac, but... Well, that, that, that is literally the same thing. So then, how do you not it's, get avocado? <laughs> how do you not it's, the it's, same it's, thing? it's different. You're like, alright, guys, right, guys, I love you guys. ice, hate water. <laughs> You know, you know what, guys? I don't get this obsession with chocolate. Like, I, I, I get like Nutella. Nutella's great. Chocolate, I just don't. Nutella get it. is fucking great. Nutella's delicious, but it's terrible. It is terrible for you, but it's fucking great. Nutella is like, like the the gods, uh, the gods' nectar of spreads. All right, so I'm just going to build up a little bit of money, and then we're going to be turning oh, every single intersection oh, so that was your in roundabouts. Spend all, spend all your money on upgrades, so then you couldn't actually do the uh, roundabout. Borrow money. Borrow money from the bank. Put yourself uh, in thousands, thousands of dollars. Of, put, your, put yourself in thousands of dollars of debt, just so you can, uh, so you can deploy roundabouts. Done. Let's start deploying some roundabouts. I did. I, I took out a loan. Did, you have an officer in the middle, right? And every roundabout. All right, here we go. Yep. Yeah, put, put, put a traffic warden at every roundabout as well. So, so if they, if they miss a turn. 
We're gonna put a decent size roundabout here. No, 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 go, no, no, no. go with small ones. Like, like, yeah, like nice. So nice that ones. one's gonna be decent size, and every single other one is gonna be small. Okay. Something that might be too small. Nah, Something like fine. that. I can't see it because obviously like the game bagging. That's perfect. That donut, donut sized, small one, the smallest. No, that's too big. That's too big. I think that's too big. You should have gone the one first one. Oh boy. Okay. Well then. <laughs> I'm going to leave those as is and I'm just going to yeah, do dude. all the other ones smaller. And I want the entire city as a whole to be like a giant circle. I want that to be the design. The design must be perfect. So then, what he needs is a little like he needs a little voice sound, where it's like a bell. But then someone comes in and says, "We need more service." <laughs> so, so, so we can just a, so we can just hit, a, we can just claim that. What the city needs is more service. <laughs> More roundabouts. more roundabouts. More roundabouts. I've got a Mama, fever. I've got a fever for more roundabouts. <laughs> and that's how your sound drops for us. Alright, I'll work on the circle philosophy for the uh, whole entire city later. Right now, I'm just going to replace every single intersection with roundabouts. This is already looking a thousand times better. Really? This is looking a thousand times better? A thousand times better than what it looked like. Objectively, a thousand times better. I bet you get all the viewers now. People, people for miles around will come to watch your stream because you are the roundabout king. Lord of roundabouts. The Lord of roundabouts. In fact, you, you don't even have to call them loud roundabouts. You can call them nipple bouts. <laughs> nipple bouts. Oops. Can, can we have a look see in a minute at what your traffic situation is? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just let me finish with the roundabouts. You can stay on me, sir. I'll hold you for a while. Let me move this down here and make this faster. Not I enough money. I, I ran out of money. I actually said, said to myself, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to stay up to do some work. And I've just ended up watching your stream and forcing <laughs> you to do things against your will. All right. So I have ran out of money. Here's what the traffic situation is like. We're at 90%. One, 90% C. 2% 89% Well, that's because you haven't deployed all the roundabouts <laughs> Okay <laughs> I don't understand why there's uh, queues on those uh, those those middle roundabouts Why are they orange? Uh, it, I, as I was telling you, if there's traffic moving through there A lot of traffic, it'll turn orange it doesn't matter if they're stopped or not. And then uh, also, if we can make sure that this roundabout is set up correctly, it's not. It's not set up correctly. We have to put in yields. And uh, I think it's like that. You got to set up yields and priority. Correctly. That's the, problem. It's, that's the problem. Is like this whole traffic system is based on American drivers. You don't know how to yield. You have to manually put yields in. But well, no, it's it's so that the computer knows that the uh, the cars need to need to yield. It's it's not a based on American. I can change it to to left hand drive if I wanted to as well. But it doesn't uh, change anything about the AI. 
All right, let me throw some more houses over here so I can get some more people, so I can make more money, so I can put in more roundabouts. Nah, just take another loan. No. <laughs> I want, I don't know if I can afford the, the payback rate on the other loan. I mean, maybe I can, but I'm only in the positive about 200 right now. Don't see how that's my problem, Lol. Uh huh. Actually, I'm gonna have to up taxes a little bit. Wow. Just to feed that roundabout obsession you have, you're gonna have to increase taxes. Yeah. The general Technically, population. it's your roundabout obsession, Jake. Yeah. He didn't have to listen. See, fair. This is true. Secretly, I think he loves roundabouts. I, I don't I don't love roundabouts at at all, actually. Yeah, he, he he's kind of said that a few times. <laughs> yeah, I think I might agree with him. Secretly, he has a roundabout fetish. Oh, it's really. The man is probably rock hard under that webcam right now because of all these roundabouts he's seeing on the screen. I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at all of those roundabouts. Look at them. Indeed. Oh, look at that. That that's a red that's a red spot right there. Well uh, it's your bad traffic management, buddy. Buddy <laughs> It's not even any Daddy. better. Oh, <laughs> Paddle, buddy. Ninety percent. Well, maybe, oh, maybe maybe ninety percent is the highest it can go. Did you no. Ninety one boom in your face. Roundabouts coming into action. 80, 89, 90. It wasn't worth the like twenty thousand dollars I spent putting in all these roundabouts. Because you haven't spent enough money. Invest more. It'll get better. It'll get better before it gets worse. Oh uh, no! Wait, the other way around. It'll get worse before it gets better. All right, here we go. I'm keeping this coming. Crash. Every single intersection around about. Meteorologists are issuing a thunderstorm warning for the coming days. Citizens are advised to stay indoors. Out of money. You missed one. You missed one. No, I'm out of money. Storm is battering oh. the city. Stay indoors until the storm has passed. It's a money thing, Jank. Yeah. I can't afford all of your crazy roundabouts even after upping taxes. Pick out another loan. It'll be fun. Nah. That's not a good idea. See, there's your problem. You put all these roundabouts in. There's like houses built in the middle of the roundabout road. I know it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't, it doesn't make a difference no, at all. No, okay, this roundabout I probably made too small. You think so? Yeah. It's literally the size of the intersection. Yeah, that's it just means that they went up to stop. Alright. Well let's let's keep it going. Let's make this one a little bit bigger though. This looks crazy. Oh shit. I Roundabouts or Elden Ring? Well, no joke. Yeah, all like, the roundabouts. You know, like uh, a roundabout represents a ring. So you really, basically, we've just turned this game into Elden Ring 2.0. <laughs> How the fuck did he die behind me? That was the dude I had my lock on on. On him. Check your, what's your traffic situation now? I bet it's like so high. 88, 86, 87. Beautiful. 88, 89. Look at all of this red, Jank. Doesn't, 
I don't believe you. There's no red. Actually, what I probably need to do is go in here and fix... Fix these. That's which is fair. kind of a pain, but... What well, I need I to do I is control shift click. At least set up all these roundabouts on the main road. Because we gotta make sure that there's proper yield. Oh, it didn't do it. It didn't do the proper yield. Okay, hold on. So much manual input to make like, what it, what is this, this work. This is not stocks and shares, so why are you having to deal with yielding? Wait, do you have to yield with stocks? Well, the stocks have yield. Oh, I see. Um, it was a bad it, joke, okay? Steve Miller. Okay. It's like almost 2 a.m. You're good. There we go. Every single intersection is now a roundabout. You missed one. Oh, oh, oh there's some over here. Hold on. Oh, you missed even more than you counting those. All right, which one did I miss? Uh, north west. Oh, I see, I see. Right there. Fuck this boss. Oh no, you still missed one. You're upgrading roads now. You still missed one in the northwest. Oh, I see. This one. There we go. Problem, problem is the gaming stream is slightly behind, like... Where we're talking. But yeah, you found it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 you found it. Alright, let me just upgrade all the rest of these dirt roads. Oh, that's probably why you're getting the 88% percent these dirt roads. No, the dirt roads are fine. <laughs> but we'll make it a paved road place. And there we go. A roundabout on every single intersection. You, sir, are a winner. Just remember that. When they fire you as mayor for doing a stupid traffic policy. At least they put in roundabouts. Just, just tell them, Jane called you a winner. Alright, so oh, it literally did not way. affect traffic in the slightest. <laughs> it did. N no. Yeah, like wait, wait until you've got like 10,000 people and it's still at 91%. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, you're probably right. Probably all it affected was your bank balance. Um, it definitely affected my bank balance. I could have used that loan a lot more effectively than uh, than look roundabouts. More, look how much more character your city has when you're just looking at it from, uh, from this up on high. It has so much character. So unique. Character is uh, the name of the game, buddy. You should run that like happy animation every time you drop a roundabout. <laughs> An explosion of happiness. All the uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> I don't control the the happy yeah. animation. But don't worry, we can uh, we can edit the YouTube VOD and uh, put it in post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, try and actually grow. God, now that there's roundabouts, it makes everything weird. What no, the just fuck, connect, game? Just connect it to the roundabout. This is the good thing about roundabouts. You can have multiple exits and entry points. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's the um, the painting of the zoning is weird. Oh, when it's all, like, not... 
lined up. And then another two roundabouts. Beautiful. Well, it's nice. ugly. It's so ugly. Like you cannot think that that's beautiful. I don't. I think it's hideous. But, uh, yeah. Who's who's the muppet? Here? The guy suggesting the roundabout. The Oh, an earthquake right in the middle of my city. <laughs> an earthquake oh, no. is occurring. Don't panic and wait for help if you are in the affected area. Right in the middle of my city. Well, it sounds like the city planner kind of put the city right on top of the vault. Yeah, it does kind of seem like it's your fault. Literally, like, it's your fault. You own that piece of land. Also, notice how how well the traffic is handling the situation because of the roundabout. Yeah, this is like a giant, giant <laughs> thing in the middle of the city. That's like, uh, oh god. That was a that was a terrible recreation of what uh, an earthquake would be. That that basically is more like if this was Arrakis and that was a sandworm just cutting through <laughs> like part of the city. Yeah. Oh Jesus. Oh. Uh, why did that happen? Oh, because I chose level. Alright, hold on. This will work. Let's smooth it out. The, yeah, it is a terrible recreation of what would happen in an earthquake. An earthquake would shake everything to hell, but a crack wouldn't yeah. open up like that. And also the fact that you can just fix it so easily um, almost makes it pointless. Done. Yeah, it's it's more annoying it than anything money. else. Yeah, and it does, and I don't really have a lot of extra money, thanks to all these roundabouts that I put in. How is that my problem? <sighs> Everything build, is your problem. You build, you build your city on a goddamn fault line, and then you're like, oh, and all these roundabouts. You know, it's just that's not why you had a an earthquake. It's not why I had an earthquake, but it's why I have no roundabout. money. R roundabouts are not the same as fracking. <laughs> and I, I don't know about you, but I don't actually even believe fracking causes stuff. Like that, so. I'm pretty sure it doesn't cause very big earthquakes, oh. from what I understand. Oh. If any. Uh, if, if the skeptics would say that 100% fracking causes stuff. This is your opportunity to rebuild a city with less intersection, therefore less roundabouts. He, oh, you do have a point there, actually. Thank you, really Eternity. You should, that, that's really what you should be doing, uh, is actually building a city with less intersection. Making it more efficient. <sighs> Just long strips of single roads, with a giant roundabout on each end. <laughs> And then a bunch of meandering roads in the middle. Ah, no <clears> roads in the middle. Like, if you want to go somewhere, you have to literally go either... You have to go from one end of the city all the way to the other end just to turn around so you can, you can get to the other side of the road. And do, like, a, uh, a one-road city. Yeah. Like, everyone lives on a single, long, winding stretch of road. Kind of like, <laughs> and, and it just has a roundabout on each end just so you can kind of turn around. Well, you wouldn't even need a roundabout on each end. Yep. In fact, yeah, don't even need a roundabout each other. That would be a good design for a city. Like, the, the challenge would be, like, can't have any, like, it just has to be one long stretch. And, and, and making the, uh, like, managing the traffic, transport to do that. Do, do you want me to do that? Because I totally will. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that sounds like an interesting challenge. Like, Alright, you know what? 
what we'll, what we'll do, we'll say um, mass transit, so trains and monorails can break that rule. That's how you kind of. But that, those are the only things that can. Anything road related has to be based off a single road that goes that roundabout hell over one place. <laughs> they use blimps for everything? Interesting. Blimps are a terrible transportation method. Alright, let's go for a new Nick. game. This boss could suck my dick! Nice job. Congratulations. Let's see, should I do Desert Oasis? It doesn't matter where <clears> you go. <throat> I guess like one thing you want relatively flat. Garden Rivers. So it's pretty water? flat. That's a good question. Yeah, why are you uh, drunk? I'm drinking protein. Does it have alcohol in it? No. Then it doesn't count. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> All right, arid plains. This place look like it looks like it's pretty flat. Came here to see drunk llama, and let's call this. Let's see, what should I name my run one road city? Your one road city? Yeah. All right, seven hundred and fifty mile. Two road town. Two road town. Seven hundred fifty mile. What was that prosthesis thing that I got? Oh. Alright, 750 mile town? Is that what you said? Nah, drink, drink Jack Town. Drink Jack Town, okay. Drink Jack Town. Let's go for it. E boy, Les something go. I think it's Let's, but without the T. <coughs> no, I'm pretty mm. sure he meant Les. What is that? I don't know. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, it's like a fist slasher weapon. Okay. All right, I so. A E in the UK pronunciation would be pronounced E. So it's eternity. Not eternity. Right? Uh so the A E like single character, um, as far as I know, is pronounced Ash. Ash Eternity. What's up, Ash Trey? <laughs> I'd be happy to call him Ashtray from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put women in my mouth. Not much. Abu. 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 These kids today, like, so lazy they can't even like spell out full words. They have to like abbreviate everything. So lazy, just absolutely the laziest. It's not because the cell phones at one point in time, had, you had to type out every single character multiple times in order to get it to show the correct character. Even when that was the case, I used to type it out properly. Well, you were probably a really slow typer then. No, I was no. I think we were all really fast typers. I think text. So I mean, you have to remember, I'm in the generation where text speech was created. Like it, it, it started with people speaking normally, and it turned into text speech over time. So yeah, it wasn't like day one people started saying "habu." 
Yeah. I mean, you probably remember shorthand with pagers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, like it's 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 weird to think that like uh, when I was in in high school, the internet when I started high school at least the internet didn't exist. You know, like uh, weird. Do uh, you guys remember Encarta CDs? No. It was the encyclopedia on on CD on CD-ROM and that was like basically like the 90s version of Wikipedia um, mm -hmm. you'd get you'd get like all of like Encyclopedia Britannica for example but on a CD-ROM and then eventually and it, was, it was a Microsoft product it was fantastic it was great um, and then you know and then like the internet was invented and then Wikipedia came along and Encarta as a product just beca became completely like defunct overnight because of uh, Wikipedia being like so much better as a as a tool that have instant information versus a CD-ROM which you'd have to you'd have to sit there and type and hope that it's the, I mean encyclopedias in general I think are basically like now a dead product okay, so yeah basically Encyclopedia Britannica I think just they, they just don't sell copies of that, that anymore um, same but yeah Encarta was like the original original encyclopedia the first one was 94 Encarta 94 good times I mean hell I think when I was in primary school e computers weren't a thing in uh, in schools it was only really in the mid 90s that computers became a thing in schools bad <laughs> insane insane how quickly technology's moved along yeah and your mobile old phones so well I mean like, mobile phones weren't really a thing uh, it's like media rich phones like we have today weren't even a thing in 2007, like 2007 was when the first iPhone came along, and that didn't take over the world instantly. It took a couple of years. You really think like everyone having a mobile phone is really only a thing that's like a 10-year, 10 10-year-old 10 technology, right? You know, pre like go back 15 years, it wasn't a saturated market. People had like flip phones, but it was really only the Western market that had that. Now everyone's got an Android or iDevice. Insane. Insane how quickly uh, things have moved on internet in your pocket that wasn't a thing we had WAP do you remember WAP of course you don't no you don't know what WAP is WAP I don't know what WAP is that, yeah WAP is something that predates like 3G like Cardi B song yeah. in fact in fact it predates 2G it actually predates 1G WAP is like the original original like OG? internet mobile mobile data tech and it was so painfully slow disgust like you had to design custom web pages to be able to like so that they would load quickly enough for it to, to work. Yeah, at times. Wow. Wap. 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 No, it's not the same as what it means today. What did it stand for, I wonder? Problem is, I'm going to Google what does Wap stand for. And it's going to come to 100% be, <laughs> be something to do with Cardi B. Right. Wireless application protocol is what WAP used to stand for. Wow, it actually came up? Yeah. Well, I had to add in computers. Like, like if I oh, it, okay. In computers, it, it, it straight away goes to Cardi B. It'd be like, yo, this is a wet-ass pussy over here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's taking forever do, to load. Do you, guys, do, you guys still have, do you guys still have visual voicemail in, in America? You never got visual voicemail here. You don't even know what visual voicemail is. <laughs> is that just like a uh, video recording? No, no, it was the it was the headline feature of like the original iPhone in 2007. Visual voicemail was uh, someone could phone you and it would go to voicemail and the iPhone would be smart enough to then transcribe that voicemail into text oh, yeah, so that no, you could no, so that. you could go into a thing, into a menu in your in your voicemail settings and it would say, "Oh, well this is the voicemail from this guy. This is what they say." So you don't actually have to listen to it, you can just read it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, that tech never came to the UK, but it was like a massive headline feature for the iPhone, like, when it first came out, because no other phones had that tech. Visual voicemail was a big thing. What do you call it, then? Because, obviously, I've just told you what it was, and you didn't even know what I was talking about. Uh, I don't it? know, it's just, a, it's just uh, when I click on the voicemail, it's there to transcribe for me. Okay. 
I thought I would just call voicemail. I, 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 would, I would love to have that feature in the UK. It'd be great. Like, I get a lot of voicemails. I Maybe because they can't, they can't translate the English accent sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> they just make it sound bad offensive. I mean, they probably could make it transcribe the British accent. I don't, I don't feel like that'd be too too difficult. Llama, Nick was joking. Gosh. Oh. Also, I'm 99% sure your, your PC's crashed. And no, it's it's still going. The bird is still spinning. Oh, is, the is, ham is the hamster still running in his wheel? It's still running. The, We're uh, still going. Load. It's loading. I'm amazed that it's taking this long to load, but like things are still running on it. <laughs> it's just stopped though. Like I see the progress bar moving a little bit. Where did you find that second path to the elevator, Nick? Uh, uh, what's what's the name of the one you're looking for? The uh, secret one, the, the gold road. Yeah. Um, which one do you have? I think I have the left. I got the one you got for nail. Okay, then how, how'd you miss the other one? Like, cause I had the first half for a while. I don't know. I don't know where you got it from. And it wasn't seven years ago. Ashtray. What was it then? Uh, like I said, it was in the 90s. That's what? Uh, 30 years ago. Fuck. Okay. That was a while ago, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of crazy. I mean, you go back. Like, I, like, technology is moving at such an insane pace. It's like the guy who, like, uh, Alan Turing, who invented, like, effectively the first modern computer. That happened in the 1940s. As there were code breaker computers to break the codes that the Nazis were using. And Turing invented that computer. Like that only happened in the forties. From from that, the computer would be the size of a warehouse to like having more power in your the palm of your hand in less than a hundred years. Same. Yeah, I mean, I I think it just depends on what you consider to be a computer. Because from what I understand, they had um they had boxes that could do math before then, where you oh, yeah, you had I mean, dials and yeah. stuff. So so. Like the definition of a computer, yes, like they had things predating that, but that's why I use the term modern computer. Like it was a computer yeah. used, like worked in the way computers work now, with capacitors and, and the way the actual electrical signals so. were converted across. But yeah, I think that, um, I can't remember what, what article it was, but there was something like an article that talked about how. Technically, computers have existed since like predating like 200, 2000 BC. There was there was technically what you you could consider a computer, um, uh -huh. like an abacus in in some uh, some definitions can be considered a computer. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it just depends on how strict you want to make the, the definition, but um, that sounds about right, uh, that modern computing basically started in the 1940s. And they had, uh, they had uh, transistors, or they, when they first started putting in like electronics into a computer instead of mechanics, Mm -hmm. and then you had to manually program the computer to do stuff by connecting uh, connecting various things and, and if I remember right were they were they analog at first they weren't digital they were they were, they were analog they were they, um, th there was elements of analog still to it yeah back then um, but then they very quickly became more and more digital uh, and Alan Turing had a lot to do with that as well um and it's crazy. So really, his whole life is a very sad story as well. Because uh, he was he was persecuted afterwards. After the war, he was really badly treated by the UK. Like he was British guy, um, and all the work he did was like uh, in, in the 
secret bunkers in the UK. And then after the war, like they basically just completely wrote him off and treated him like terrible. Eventually, they castrated him, chemically castrated, and then he committed suicide, like in the 60s. He wasn't even like uh, 40 years old. He was about 45. He was, he was very young. So yeah, sad story. Most genius, like I think he was, he was quite a. Uh, I'm nine. I'm sure he was autistic. I'm pretty sure that was diagnosed as autistic. So, just mm -hmm. very, very special in that regard. I th and the reason he was castrated, like he was, uh, he was homosexual. And again, like this is not even like in the so this is the 1960s that he was he committed suicide and all this stuff happened to him. He was like, um, he was convicted for indecency with another man because it was against the law in the UK at the time. And it's like this is less than again less than a hundred years ago that uh, we did this to people it's insane mm. insane and especially someone who's technically a war hero why you treat treat them like that sad times in other news you fix city skylines i tried to fix it well it's gone further than it before yeah uh, i killed it i restarted the process um, so I'm hoping that it works this time. I don't know. Well, definitely progress is being made. Yeah, I might have too many brave tabs open. No, it's not using up all my memory. No, we're still good. I have like a, there we go. I have like 65 tabs open right now. All right, so we are making the one road city. All right. Yep. So I'm going to do, what's the biggest road I have available to me? Four lane? Are you going to make lane the, entire, the entire thing four lane all the way? Uh, Basically, yeah. So we're just going to connect that guy up like that. Uh, oh, it should see. be one way, right? Surely. N no. It can't be a one yeah, way. It should, should be one way. No, because then you're going to make it into a giant loop. It's going to go all the way around, snaking around. And the end is going to come back. So, and that's how you get around the city. That's, that's the challenge. Oh, so it has to touch back here. Yep. It has to be one way and has to go all the way around and loop back. The only way you can get around the sea is to drive around the entire sea to get back to where you came from. But then people... Oh. That's the challenge. Though. Otherwise it'd be easy, because people would just drive to the end of where the, wherever you end the road. Like, that's silly, no. Or across... Or you, like, no, so the concept is, it's a one-way road. It, okay. You can't have crossroads. It has to be one long road that can loop, like, loop around itself, and it has to touch back to that highway point. All right, one-way road. Get rid of that connection in the middle as well, so they can't use a connection to. Yeah. What? No, they're not. They they have to. They, they can only use that connection to get onto the freeway. Yeah, that's fine. You you can't use it to turn around. No, no, I'm saying like that middle. Oh, okay, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it's no, it's get, one oh, way. Okay, no, get, no, no, get rid of that middle that middle connection in between the, those two. Like the on and the off ramp. Wait, really? Well, well I can't see what you're doing because obviously, like, I've got lag. Yeah, uh, yeah, that middle bit was Franklin Street, where it says Franklin. Street. Oh my God! Then, then they can't yeah. turn around. They, they can't, they can't, they can't turn around if they, if they don't have that. Because then you have to get on and off the freeway. There's the the. Like, there, there is no turnaround anywhere. If this loops around and connects back, there's nowhere for them to turn around. Well, you're going to have to figure that out. That's it. Because they can only go on here and oh, then yeah, get well, off. That's, well, that, no, no, but that's, you're, that's, you're facing that the wrong way. 
the direction of the road there is the wrong way. That's why. No, no, no. I, I just turned it around. Yeah, so give it a sec. Yes, yes, yes. That's perfect. Yeah. So th there's nowhere to turn around though. They get on the. F they get from the freeway on, and then they have to leave. That. Or, well, or, or they go. To, they, or they go to where they're going. No, they have to be able to make the loop. Oh, okay, fine. You can connect it. Because look, if somebody is right fine, here, fine. No, 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 no. and okay, they need okay, to get over right here, here, they cannot do it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, fine, fine. <laughs> yeah, like it would, it would be impossible. <laughs> it, oh, would, no, it wouldn't work. Okay, well, I just wasted a bunch of money. Um, let me see if I can use this. So here is what we're gonna do. How can I design this so that this isn't terrible? Let's see. Well, I think you need to go all the way across from left to right. Because at the start it has to be like super long. You shouldn't be like making it wide, you should be making it long. What? I don't know, I can't describe it, I need to kind of like draw it, but I'm not going to draw it. Like cheating. You need to figure that out. Alright, well I need to make sure that I have water. I need to make sure that I have electricity. And sewage. And all right. So let me think about this then for a sec because this is going to be way different than than uh, than I thought. I mean, I could just make a loop for now and build up some money and then expand the loop. That makes sense. So like just basically build this out over here, connect it, put in some homes, like this. No, 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 no. I'm going to put them over here, like this, connect up some water. And then I'm going to run it. And then what I think I'm going to do is like snake pattern the road right here and put in residential and then have like my commercial down here. As long as you don't break the loop, right? Like as, you, as long as you keep the loop going as a single loop, you can't have a can't have like offshoots. Right, it's going to be one single road. Yep, and in theory, you shouldn't need to do any road like any traffic management. This shit should just work. It should be a hundred percent pretty much all the time. But it's not going to be a hundred percent all the time. It's well, already at eighty-five percent. Oh, that's disgusting. And there's not even any cars yet. It's all because of this freeway right here. I mean, at 90%, we had nearly perfect traffic. Look at that. We got a dude. He went to a house. And then I'm going to have some shops over here, like this. And then I'm going to have the industrial right next to the freeway over here. Oh, 
I guess it doesn't even matter. And the end. <laughs> because the trucks have to come in and go around anyways. I was thinking, like, the trucks could just... After all, they have to loop. After all, they have to loop. Hyperloop. That's what you should call this map. Hyperloop. <laughs> Hyperloop. Look at this river. It's nice. Got my little windmill. By the freeway. Wait, why is that freeway off the ground all the way across here? Because whoever designed this map is an idiot. Although that's what I think. That's not very smart. It's not even high enough off the ground to even use. No. Or maybe a car can get under there? Let me see. Oh yeah, okay, I guess I can. Or maybe they aren't an idiot. Maybe not. More residential. Yep. I can't put it too close to the industry, though. I have to buffer between with shops. Oh. And theoretically, flow should actually be perfect, right? In theory. I can imagine your bottleneck's actually going to be just the on the on ramp and off ramp on the highway. It's probably. It's probably going to be the only bottleneck. No. Yeah, I mean there are ways to kind of circumvent that though. Make it so that there's not so many outside uh, outside connections. Okay. So. Well, deal with it when it deal with it when it's natural. Now what I'm going to do. Best way to circumvent that is say, okay, let's put an exception that you can have one roundabout there. No. No exceptions. See, I would, see, I would yeah, I was always going to say I'd snake all the way back in the middle. No exceptions, no roundabouts. There we go. Yeah, I think early game, you're not going to have a problem. I think your issues are going to start coming when your thing gets a bit bigger. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is already a kind of excessive amount of distance to travel. be done by district, I think it's going to have to be done by like um, sections of the road. Well, so I think for right strike, now, strike. this can work. Yeah. yeah, right now it'll work, but I reckon long term you're going to have to go with like stripes along the road so that things are like not too far away from each other when it comes to like zoning range. Well, what I'll be able to do a little bit later is put in pedestrian paths so that people can walk from over here. To over here and vice versa yeah that's cheating no it's not cheating it's one road cheating. It's, it's not cheating cheating it's not cheating i told you, I told you the only the, uh, the only thing I, as i said the rule was the only thing that can break is uh trains and monorails the only exceptions i gave you they could break the rule of like it has to be transit by by one direction road so I'll allow you to have a monorail system that can break the rule and go anywhere. But no pedestrian paths, no like, no scamming. What? No pedestrian paths? 
at all. No bike, no no bike paths. None of this, none of this whiz bang. Oh, you can put what? you can put bike paths in, but they have to be one way and they have to be built along the same road. So they also like if you want to cycle from uh, to to your neighbor's house, but he just happens to be in the wrong direction, you have to cycle around <laughs> the to get to him. <laughs> okay, there are no one directional bike paths in this. Oh, well, that's terrible then. Then you can't use bike paths. There's actually there's no roads that are one directional that also have bike paths. So, oh, this one is one lane, one way with two bicycle lanes. That's the only one. But I'm, I'm not going to subject my people to, to one lane roads. They they actually they can't they can't go backwards on a one way road so that's not gonna break anything. Here we go, I'm growing. Now I have trash to deal with. So let's get a recycling center in here. And a clinic. Oh, fire safety will be an interesting one. <laughs> you have a fire. Yeah. The guy is like, just happens to be slightly in the wrong position. Again, like I said, I think the whole city design is going to have to be very much like kind of stripes along the along the road path rather than city plans. Yeah, probably. But for now. Like, services are going to have to go at the start of the stripe. And then cover, like, the, the area. And then it's going to have to go into, like, shops and industry. Yeah, yeah. And, and then go back into residential with, like, uh, services and stuff. Yep. 96%. Traffic is, oh, 89, 90. Traffic is worse than it was in the other city with uh, the traffic light. I, I, I think it's purely just the fact that you're growing. I think, uh, it'd be interesting to know, like, if you if you uh, deleted the on ramp and off ramp, so you just have the traffic that's going around the city and no no traffic coming in and out from the highway, how much of a difference that would make? Or does it still take it into account because the, the highway is technically running in your zone? So I think it would still take it into account. Um, and also the city wouldn't be able to grow because yeah. the people have to come from the outside connection. Well, I was thinking more of just getting a one-time measure just to see, like, just to see the city as a, as a point in time. To, uh, yeah, uh, no, I can't, it, imagine, I can't imagine. I mean, I, I get it's inefficient, but I can't imagine it'd be that inefficient. Because technically you, you should have no traffic. Yeah, no, I know. It's just because it counts the cars on the road as traffic. So you can't. Like, I don't know if you can get up to, like, 100%. Unless you get rid of all the cars. I mean, the theory here is, in theory, you should never have any kind of, like, slowdowns or anything. Cool. Yeah, in theory. It'd be interesting to see that when you've got some proper... Like, even a few thousand people, I think, you'll you'd, we'll see, like, what went coming. All right, so I'm going to continue this with this right here. And then what I think I'm going to do. I probably should just keep on snaking it. I don't see any reason why not. Yeah, you should just keep snaking. I think snaking is the only way you're going to be able to use your space up efficiently. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I 
time to borrow some money. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Stop cap. Wait, that's not a one-way road. Jeez. Yes, it is. Is it? Okay. Fine. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Your arrow, your arrow is on. Is it oh, wait. Is it a one-way? It should be a one-way. Oh, whoops. There we go. Now it's a one-way. There was nothing on there. Nobody can turn around in the middle of the street either. So... It didn't break... It didn't break anything. It wouldn't have mattered. It would only have been like... They, they could turn around on one little road and go nowhere. Yeah, the, there wasn't... They, they, yeah, there the... Wasn't. The game AI can't turn around in the middle of the road. So there were had to have would have had to have been an offshoot or something for them to actually turn yeah. around. That's interesting because you Actually it's interesting that the game is still naming the streets different names as well. Yeah. We just, we just consider that just oh no, that's just that's still just one big road. I think it's because it changed um Jackson, 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 Jackson. Wait. Taylor. When did it become Taylor? So it could became Taylor right here. So this ended Jackson. Oh, because I put in a different type of road. This is a three lane and that's a four lane. That's why I renamed it. Oh. Cheats. No, no cheats. Alright, now let me fix this. Uh... Oh, whoops. Oh, wait, is it, so is it three lane just for like a tiny little section as well? Yeah, it is. No. Uh, because I. Yeah, I think I misclicked. Alright, so we're going to continue to snake this. Uh oh. There we go. Uh, like, like, I'm, I'm, I'm watching your stream and it's kind of obviously like, there's lag to it, so I can't, uh, I can't, I react to things that you're doing and it's delayed. Because it's like, right. Is it all Jackson now? It is all Jackson now. Yeah, I think so. So I guess, that, so, so, so I guess that's that's the the objective measure of if you're doing it properly. Like the street name should never change. <laughs> right. Everyone lives on Jackson Street. That would make uh, trying to get where you want to go confusing. Yeah, I'm at the corner of Jackson and Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> North Jackson, South Jackson, East or West Jackson. <laughs> Oh, what's your house number? Oh, uh, 15,307 <laughs> Jackson Street. <laughs> oh, that's like a 10 mile drive from where I'm at. Oh, around the loop? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but surprisingly, it's only a two minute walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, if I could have put in a pedestrian path right along here, that's what I would have done. Ah, uh, that's cheating. And then a pedestrian path from here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Up to 1,000 people. Oh, here we go. So I'm going to make all of this a district. And then... I'm going to make the district organic and local produce and self-sufficient buildings. So now I have to deal with less trash and less electricity. They give me less money though. So that's the trade-off. But by making it all um, local produce, it forces them to use um, the goods that are being created over here instead of goods that are being pulled in yeah. from the freeway. 
which means that at least 50%, if I understand right, which means that if I continue building up and I get out here and it's super far away from here and I put industry over there, they have to use industry from over there. Makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit better. God, they're really having to go in order to get anywhere and we're just getting started. traffic situation uh let's see nine uh 88 90 93 90 it's around 90 all right so i think i'm gonna put a little section of shops over here And over here so then these people can shop over here and these people can shop over here <sighs> setting up my firefighters is gonna be a huge pain Yeah. Only if you have oil. It'd be funny to have the police on a high speed chase. Like around <laughs> the loop. <laughs> uh. Not getting enough electricity. I guess we'll throw in another wind turbine. And that's not doing it. I might have to throw in a coal power plant. Do what? Nuclear power future. Obviously you haven't unlocked it yet. I haven't unlocked it yet. Nuclear power is up here. I actually think it's the future for the world as well. IRL. I, I wish that more places use nuclear power. It would make electricity so much cheaper. So do I. Actually, there's a, I watched a really interesting uh, YouTube video about um, how renewables are just a complete, it's a complete fabrication that they're going to solve the world's problems in terms of power. Because they just, they're expensive and there's just no way. And the, um, the guy who wrote the article uh, gave a really good real world example of Germany being the most heavily invested in renewable energies like wind and solar and they mm -hmm. have the most expensive electricity in all of Europe and France their neighbors are the most heavily invested in nuclear energy and they mm -hmm. now have the cheapest electricity in all of Europe that kind of shows you that like it's all well and like I think nuclear just has a very bad rep it's it's like fantastically clean. Even the waste can be reused in the power plants to generate even more electricity. Um, uh huh. Yeah, it's just like people just have this kind of misconception that these things are going to explode and cause massive fallout, and that just isn't the case. It just isn't what happens. Yeah. No, the the only cases of um, fallout happened because of uh, mismanagement and poor safety standards. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, exactly. And so if we're able to maintain better safety standards and stuff, uh, then it's, it's not actually going to be a big problem. Um, from, from what I understand, like, uh, modern nuclear reactors that are built, you could take them and like drop them a couple of inches, like in an earthquake or something, uh, and they would be totally fine. Well, really, I mean, I also was reading about the, like, is it thorium? So instead mm -hmm. of using uranium, you use thorium as the uh, as the nuclear nuclear fuel. The, uh, and the only reason they used uranium as the fuel was because it had the dual use of also being able to build nukes with it. Whereas thorium is much safer to use as a nuclear fuel, and you can't build nuclear weapons with it. So it, it just isn't as it isn't anywhere near as dangerous, and it doesn't have anywhere near as much waste um, 
of it. It's just a much, much better, more modern, and it's much more common as well in, in the world. So it's again, it's a, it's abundant. It's one of the most abundant um, elements on on the planet. So yeah, it's like it's win-win. It's just uh, getting the getting the reactors online. And I think the problem is, is that it just takes so long to build these damn reactors. We're talking like years, like billions of dollars and mm. years of investment, and there just isn't. It's all public. The public just doesn't have an appetite for it. Well, so I think, damn, damn like, w one of the problems, though, with thorium, um, the, the reason why it can't be used as a, like, nuclear bomb uh, is because of uh, it's a lot less radioactive. Um, so you need more of it in order to, to like, produce the same amount of electricity. Um, but one of the things that I've been reading about uh, is uh, micro reactors. Um, yeah, I, I was reading about micro reactors as well. Right, where they like they make a small reactor that that basically goes by your home. Hundred mm percent. -hmm. That that again is that's just another element, another really good solution to future energy issues. You know, don't don't put solar panels on your wall. Put a nuclear reactor in your garage. What do you call a garage? A uh, garage. Garage. Yeah. Would have thought you guys would have had a crazy American name for it. No. Not just a garage. But yeah, no, I've been reading about those as well. I completely, I completely agree with you. But that, that's definitely like um, an element, a, a good example of, of of how to do it in the future. Yeah. And it wouldn't just power like those like what the micro reactors I was reading about wouldn't just power your your house. They would power like a bunch of houses on your street or or just your entire street. In fact, so you know it doesn't matter if you're overproducing because somebody on your street's going to be using that power. Yeah. Uh, and you also like lose less energy through the fact that you're not having to transmit it over vast mm -hmm. distances, like the grid. Right. Just, yeah. So one one of the things that I was. Uh reading about was there were there were a couple different options like one would be you could do it on like a personal house by house basis but you could also do it as like a a town or as a city uh like a a small small city large town you could have like a power plant essentially of a couple of micro reactors and they would be able to handle most of the the load um from the the city basically in the same way that we produce most of our power now um and you'd be able to ramp it up or down based off of demand because one of the problems currently is it's uh called the duck curve problem yeah, and um that, yeah. okay cool yeah uh, so for anybody listening, uh, the duck curve problem um, is basically where uh, peak power demand is in the evening and there's a lot less demand um, in the early, like the noon-ish time. So late morning, noon, and early afternoon. Um, and it's one of the primary problems with, uh, with green energy um, is that the power production is inconsistent and uh, production like solar produces during the exactly wrong time yeah, so and, and I, I, think, I think the people who try to promote renewables kind of say oh yeah but battery technology and battery storage can solve those problems and I just don't think they can because our battery technology just isn't moving fast enough to be able to solve mm -hmm. that problem you, you can't we, our battery density isn't good enough to, to store and store that energy that we're generating during the day to be able to use in the evenings. Um, so there's actually some really great improvements in battery technology using um, graphene, but uh, graphene gra production. Gra buddy, graphene. Uh, yeah, I, anytime someone mentions graphene, I say it's, it's too slow. Gra graphene's it's been on the cards as a technology that's going to take over the world for the last. I've been I've been hearing about graphene for like the last 15, 20 years. Like it's it's not it's it's 
if it was going to take over the world, it would have done it by now. It's, it's, it's still in its infancy in terms of tech. I get it. There's loads of cool things that it can do, but no one's been able to create it uh, in in a way that you can actually like use it in at mass scale. No yeah, so that's the primary problem. Graphene has a lot of really cool properties, and they've been able to practically implement a lot of things, like uh, um, graphene supercapacitors. Uh, they they last longer, they hold more charge, they don't break down as quickly. The primary problem that we're running into um, is that uh, they can't produce graphene quickly and cheaply. So graphene is just too expensive, and too difficult to produce so yeah, i mean there was um there was a uh, one guy who figured out a way to you could print uh you could print graph you could cover uh, a cd with graphite powder and then use um cellophane tape is that what you call it in america like uh, uh, I, c I don't c know tape like you know sticky tape what do you what, like the different kinds of tape no it's like tape like clear tape um, I was just called a clear tape. I I don't know okay. if it well, had another so, name. So, so the, the, what he what he realized, he created a process whereby uh, graphite powder like covers a normal CD-ROM, and then you use this clear tape. You stick it on the CD-ROM, you peel it off, and the peel generates graphene. Um, and they've been trying to refine that process, and that's probably the last time I read about it was that was the most promising way of tr of being able to create graphene and even that gone like that's the problem they need to fix being able to generate and make graphene cheaply right. and, and and on mass and just uh, i just think they're still years years away from that um do you do you watch um thunderfoot on youtube no uh i've heard of him but i haven't watched any of his videos recently so i think i've only just started watching his stuff like over the last few weeks i think he's a fantastic youtuber and i'm mm -hmm. pretty sure i need to do more research on him as a person I, i've got a feeling from the way he presents himself in his videos he either has a science background or he is a scientist himself but he does a lot of debunking videos on these kind of technologies that will take over the world um, yeah last time last last time i saw him he was debunking the solar road i don't know if yeah. you saw that but yeah, I saw the solar red one. I mean, I mean, he's he's debunked. He debunks a lot of stuff, and um, like uh, he, I think his most latest video, he just debunked like you know, Elon's been talking about getting people to Mars again, and uh, he he did like a ref refresher because he did a video back in years ago when Elon Musk first said he was going to get people to Mars. He debunked that. Now he's debunked the new one. Uh, but he was talking about um, well, he's talked about graphene. He's talked about battery density, battery technologies. He's, he's debunked all of that stuff and like you, you you look into what he says you look into the actual science behind what he's saying and he's 100 percent right like there's so many problems a lot of, a lot of it's just it's just hyperbole like people are talking about things that like they're making assumptions about what's going to happen in the future that just that just don't come to pass because you just assume that the traje trajectory of technology is going to keep moving up uh at an insane pace and it just doesn't do that all the time you know it's it's the exceptions that do that, not the not the rules. So, um, yeah, I, I just think we're, we're quite a way away from uh, renewables being being sensible. We're way too far away from battery density becoming becoming good. Um, uh -huh. Elon Musk was promising his supercar, um, the Roadster, the new Roadster, was supposed to be delivered last year. Uh, mm -hmm. like Two hundred fifty thousand dollars supercar that can do zero to sixty in sub two seconds and has a 600 mile range like his cars can just about barely do 400 miles of range if you drive them really well on a completely flat road with zero traffic um right in perfect conditions right um they can just about do 400 miles uh like and he's and he said no 2020 2021 we'll break that 600 mile barrier on our batteries like no one no one in the world is remotely close to that kind of battery density um like it's just it's a very hard problem to crack um, I, I just don't think we're going to get there. Like, I don't think renewables will help us. Like, nuclear is the way. That's what I say. Nuclear. That duck problem is going to go away. And it also works the other way as well. You don't want to be generating too much power either because then, you know, where does it go? It, it has to go somewhere. Right. Um, so. Otherwise, it gets wasted. 
Uh, well, it's not even about waste. It has to kind of he has to go somewhere. So I think one of the big uh, one of the biggest things that um, actually is kind of a miracle uh, in in the way the technology is designed at the moment with, with all the with our power grids for all the countries, the way they work, in that you, we actually generate roughly the amount of power we need. The amount of power we need is the power that we generate. We don't generate too much because that could actually damage the grid if you generate too much and, and don't use it. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't and we don't generate under generate because if you under generate then people are going to have brownouts and blackouts. Um, so it's actually kind of like the, the way the system works is, is insanely well designed. And you've got to make sure that renewables can do that. Renewables can't because you know you, you can't rely on the sun to generate reliably when you need it to. You can't rely on wind to blow when you need it to. You know, so um, yeah, batteries are buffers. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting problem. I think, um, like I said, a nuclear has the same problem. Like, you, you can't have it just generating all the time. It needs to uh, ramp up and ramp down during peaks, peaks and uh -huh. and, uh, and that's uh, that's another problem that, that people need to look at and figure out the best solutions for those problems. Right. I mean, right now, from what I understand, nuclear doesn't really ramp up and ramp down. No, um, it for the most part, from what I understand, what we use over in the States for ramping up and ramping down is, is uh, natural gas. That's what we use in, in the UK as well. I think most of the world, to be fair, uses natural gas to do that because um, it's easy to just, you know, turn the valve, you get less gas. Right. Um, fairly easy to control it. Uh, but I think, um, in my opinion, like, like nuclear will be, it will be a fantastic thing to maintain baseline energy. So, you know, of figure course. out what the minimum is you need all the time. And that's what you generate with nuclear. Um, you know, and, and with the electrification of the world, from a car perspective as well, electricity generation is kind of going to become even more important, especially during peak hours. You know, everyone's going to drive home from work at a particular time. and They're going to plug mm -hmm. their, their, their brand new electric car into, into the grid and expect their car to charge up over, overnight. Right. That isn't that isn't a feasible future with the way that we generate electricity right now, um, and I can't believe no one's like I, I I understand there are people, I mean there are smart people talking about the problem, but it don't seem to be the same people that are actually like making the cars or saying that that's what our future is going to be. Th those guys don't seem to be thinking about that problem at all. They're just desperate to sell us these cars. But yeah, that's a that's yeah. a big issue with with it. Yeah. Yeah, no, the... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, they would have to revamp the whole entire electrical grid in order to be able to do that. Um, I think that if we had relatively... Uh, like, if we had nuclear energy going, because it's a constant production source, um, and the charging, if done correctly, might not necessarily strain the grid too much. Um, for example... Uh, on cell phones right now, they, they have the capability to charge slower over the night um, instead of charging quickly because it helps the battery last longer. And so if we were to implement that same technology into electric vehicles where like you plug it in at night and then it charges slowly over the night, then it might not strain the grid too much um, compared to like everybody just plugging in their vehicle when they get home and it straining the grid because everybody's charging quickly at once uh well, that, so that well so that's the thing so i think uh i mean the american grid is different to the uk grid because the uk grid generally we don't have tri-phase uh electrical wiring in in our homes we have single phase you guys i think as far as i understand it you guys do have tri-phase wiring um which means you can charge your electric cars faster because electric cars can charge faster on a tri-phase grid because they can just draw more power from from the from the cables. Mm. In the UK, we don't have that. We have this single phase. So any any kind of charging at home, unless you've spent an absolute ton of money upgrading to a tri-phase system, which almost no one does, um, uh -huh. it is it is a slow charge, a trickle charge. So, but but it's still going to be a problem because even if it's even if everyone's charging slowly, everyone still is coming home at the same time. You know, getting home for after the office like five six o'clock they're all getting home they're all plugging in at the same time so even if you're charging slowly you're talking about you know millions of people all coming home at the same time plugging in and expecting electricity to be generated so even if it's slow charging you're still going to run into that same problem like i agree it's not going to be as big 
but it's still going to exist as a problem. So uh, I, I don't think that's... It's an interesting one. I don't, I, yeah. I, I don't think trickle charging is a solution to it. I think trickle charging is... is it's, it's one one piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the entire puzzle. No, there would definitely have to be a lot of um, factors working I mean, together was, really well in order actually, to make it work. Yeah, there was actually in the 1970s, um, in the UK, there was actually what we used to call the... Um, uh, there was brown. Uh, do you get brownouts in America, or do you only really get blackouts? Uh, we only really get blackouts. Right. So in the, in the UK in the seventies, um, they used to be um, it used to be called uh, the tea the tea time blackout. Uh huh. Which used to happen every day on a weekday at around about seven fifteen. Because. <laughs> Uh, what would happen is, like, one of the most popular, like, soaps on British TV would be aired at 7pm 7, 7 <laughs> on Friday. And, and, uh -huh. the first ad, and the first ad break for that would be at 7.15, because our ad breaks are roughly every 15 minutes. Okay. So, uh, and that first ad break, everyone watching that show would go to the kitchen to make themselves a cup of tea. You know, the staff <laughs> drinking, drinking a cup of tea. So they'd make right. a cup of tea during the ad break and then go back to watch their show and every day at 7.15 in the entire country you'd get brownouts <laughs> you'd get like the lights starting to dim and certain like, <laughs> like, pieces of electrical stuff failing purely because the grid was like shit you have to strain to like just meet this this tiny bit of huge spike in demand where millions of uh, families are, are trying to boil a kettle right you know? But but that's oh. but that's the that's the future of electric <laughs> electric cars. That you're going to get exactly the same. And they were saying that I think there was one, there was a big report in the papers uh, recently where, where they actually tried to draw attention to the problem that that's going to come back. That's going to be like you know the 6 p.m. brownouts, where you're going to have everyone arriving home at six after work, bugging in and just expecting that. And this is going to be a a huge power spike, mm -hmm. you know, e e even on a triple charge. So yeah, and and that spike is gonna last, as you say, it's gonna it's gonna be a slow charge. So even though it's a it's not a huge spike, it's gonna be a spike, and it's gonna last. I mean, my Tesla used to take. I think it was about eight or nine hours to charge from from about twenty percent to ninety percent over okay. overnight. Okay. So that that's so I I drive put it in the driveway, plug it in, and just leave it, and it would just carry on slowly charging overnight. Um, but yeah, that, that was about eight or nine hours to, to get like a twenty to ninety, so about seventy percent of, uh, of a charge rate. Um, yeah, and that's you know, it's a it's a massive demand on the grid. Uh, right. I think I think just a general electrical infrastructure for, for electric vehicles just isn't there, um, which is one of the one of the reasons I'm I'm not a fan of electric. I'm a fan of electric cars from a technology perspective. I just think that charging infrastructure isn't there and I think the electrical grid isn't ready for it there's so many wow massive flooding yeah there, there was apparently a tsunami ah didn't even notice for some reason inland uh, inland tsunami I guess because there's I don't see any ocean anywhere but whatever this game is being mean to me yeah, it makes zero sense. And I assume now that you've got horrible traffic problems because you've got a single road <laughs> that's now flooded. Like, people can't get to where they're going because they can't get across the road. Yeah, or I'll just have to wait for the tsunami to go through. Or does traffic just not care? I don't think that it actually cares. I'm seeing cars just drive through it. Yeah, traffic just, yeah fair enough. Oh, they're getting pushed off the road. <laughs> they're getting pushed. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> Like getting pushed off the road. Nice. Oh, funny. Nah, that's that's you've broke you've broken the rules now, mate. Sorry. A tsunami has struck the city. They're going backwards. Yeah, they're going backwards. And water until the water oh, that's amazing. Receives. I've never actually seen a tsunami in this game before. I haven't either. Cool. This is the first one I've ever seen. All right. Well, that's over.
I mean, so it's an interesting question then, like that that kind of follows what what then like do we just continue with the status quo then basically continuing to make the um icm no internal combustion engine ice ice, ICE. there we go ice, ice. ice. Con yeah. continue ice. improving the the efficiency of combustion engines and um like going from there because modern vehicles are much more efficient so i what i there's this guy on youtube who made this fantastic uh like uh, graph uh, and he did a tiktok video uh showing it about how much better we are at um in terms of like how much more efficient combustion engines are now compared to how what they were in the seventies, um, and he actually like what he what he actually was talking about was um, basically a bunch of laws came out. He was actually specifically talking about America because America. But he was saying like in America they brought out a bunch of laws to say like air quality needs to improve and therefore car manufacturers need to make sure that their cars are more efficient and they don't you know take like just burn fuel like crazily. Um, and like he shows this graph and the graph kind of shows how when the laws came in place um, mm -hmm. the weight uh, the weight of cars and size of cars and I think it was three different things he compared but every single thing went down as the um, as the the uh, environmental efficiency of the car got, went up so like you know the cars became less environmentally damaging you know less polluting but everything else went down graph so like the weight of the car the size of the car um all went down because the, all these car manufacturers were like okay crap we need to the only way we can do this is by just reducing weight from the car and making the car like l less large you know uh -huh. um, and that was that's when the law was put in in the 70s but then like over time you notice that and and also i think uh horsepower of the engine as well like horsepower of the engine which just went massively down because they were like right let's we'll just make smaller engines um and then the whole graph is like panned out and you and you look at it to today every single one of those three things that they reduced like weight size and engine power have all massively gone back up again like huge spikes back to basically pre-70s levels um, uh -huh. and and yet the actual efficiency and how much polluting the car has, has still continued to go down because he and he was basically like making the argument that like laws are put in place to try and help help people and help the environment but as soon as that pressure is put onto manufacturers, say like you need to kind of conform to these laws, manufacturers eventually will find a way to bring back the efficiency and bring back what people want, which is they want power, they want efficiency, but they they want power, they want size, so they figured mm. it out. Like they just figured out from a technology perspective how to make ice better. Um, so you know, I I completely think that like ice is like for me still still a very and that's why I went back to ice. Um, uh -huh. It's a very valid, valid, valid technology for a long time coming. I think hybrid is probably the right direction um, for the, the next 10, 15 years. Um, I, I just I, unless there's a massive breakthrough in uh, in battery technology, I just don't see electric being the right choice. I also think like people keep talking about hydrogen as well. I think if you can kind of really get hydrogen. Uh, fuel cells working well again it's another thing of like it's another t type of technology but if you can get that working well that's also another really viable option um, well i think the primary problem with hydrogen wasn't that the hydrogen cars were not any good they're they're pretty good from what i understand the, the ones that are out there um it's just the availability of hydrogen there's yeah. there's just think, not there's not enough uh, um yeah i think i think i i, I read the same thing I think uh, I think Honda are the ones who are the main main pushes of like hydrogen technology cars. The, the one of the best things about hydrogen tech is that current ICE cars can be converted to use hydrogen. So you don't really need to do much modification to an engine for it to start just burning hydrogen rather than traditional gas. Uh -huh. um, so that's that's a massive advantage I think of hydrogen. Um, 
but yeah, you're right, like availability, like getting it to, yeah, like availability of electricity is very easy to kind of get everywhere. Um, so we'll see what direction it goes. In my opinion, electric is just, uh, yeah, it just isn't there. Um, it, it needs another 10 years. Either It either needs a massive breakthrough in battery tech or another another 10 years of, uh, of development at least. Well, I think that if they could get rid of the issue of um, hybrid vehicles blowing up, then... Hybrid, no, hybrid vehicles don't blow up. Uh, electric vehicles blow up. Uh, hybrid vehicles blow up too. Uh, much less than electric ones. That, that's true, that's true. But, like, hybrid vehicles blow up a lot more than, than internal combustion engine vehicles do. Oh, uh, ba ba basically, so what we can agree on then as a statement of fact is any any car that suddenly you start putting you put a battery technology into it <laughs> it's more likely to blow it, up it, it gets worse yeah yeah it's definitely like less safe than a car that just is a traditional combustion engine so if they could deal with the problem of uh those those batteries being dangerous like more likely to blow up than than having an issues issue with uh with your your current car then i think that like the plug-in hybrid would probably be the way to go um yep. and you don't necessarily even have to sacrifice anything except for really cost at this point in time in order to get like a plug-in hybrid versus the uh the the internal combustion engine counterpart um because you can make hybrid vehicles that are able to get like a lot of horsepower and that kind of stuff it's just they typically don't um, because the people that are buying the hybrid vehicles are the ones that are trying to get like all the improved gas mileage and all that stuff. And so they, they don't necessarily do that, but, uh, Lamborghini, Lamborghini made a, um, a plug-in hybrid and, uh, it was one of the fastest it's, I think it's like either one of, or the fastest commercially available land vehicle, um, yeah, that you can I mean, buy. You know, I, I think they're all doing it now with the, uh, so plug-in hybrid or used to basically be just you've got your ice and you're attaching a, a hybrid a battery to it that can kind of power the wheels um nowadays hybrid is very much you're just getting the electric you're getting the electric motor as well so you're kind of getting the best of both worlds you're getting the torque mm -hmm. of the instant torque of an electric motor um which is how like like you say the uh, the lamborghini is, is so quick because right. you can kind of use the power of the the engine and the motors but like yeah. all, 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 all vehicles, I think, all modern vehicles are doing that now. So like BMW has, has that same technology, um, Porsche has that same tech, Every, everyone's kind of jumping to that stuff. Um, in fact, I just, uh, I, I was just watching a video, uh, Doug DeMiro, uh, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's like an American, he does car reviews. Um, mm -hmm. And he's, uh, he just reviewed the new NSX, the Cura, Cura, how do you pronounce it? Acura. Oh yeah, uh, Acura. Yeah, Acura. So they just released the new NSX, which looks like an amazing car. It's it's like a two hundred and two hundred thousand dollar like what you'd consider a cheap supercar because it's kind of like it competes with the Ferraris and all the rest of it. But it's it's an Acura. <laughs> uh huh. Um, so it's kind of you know it's not a half a million dollar car. It's like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar car, but it still has the same kind of performance specs because it, again it had this massive. Um, east of a of an ice engine, and then on top of that, it has another like 300 brake horsepower electric engine as well, electric electric drivetrain, kind of give it even more of a boost. Uh, so I think in total it's got like 650 brake horsepower. It's absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I yeah, I think they're all doing it. Um, I think you know, you're right. Hybrid is the way forward, uh, at least for the short term, until they can figure out this battery. Problem. I think Thunderfoot. One of the things Thunderfoot actually was was saying when he was doing these debunkings of like battery tech the fact that all these guys are trying to increase energy density in batteries the biggest problem with doing that is the more you try and increase density of of, of energy in, within a space within a fixed space mm -hmm. the more likely it is to explode <laughs> these, things are all, these things are already like kind of they're already pushing the limits of it's not like um, Moore's law where you kind of double every like two years. That's not how this stuff works. They are already right. as, at the level where they're as efficient as they can be. And doing it, like making it more efficient needs a fundamentally different way of like thinking. And no one's figured out how to do that yet. 
and all they're doing, if they keep trying to push it with the, the way the tech is right now and the way it's designed right now, all they're doing is making something that's much more of a, just a bomb that you're attaching to to an electric motor. Um, uh -huh. Just mu much more likely to kind of get a thermal runaway. Um, so things you see like on like <laughs> the iPhones from a few years ago or like laptops from a few years ago where these things just expand out because they're um, with mobile phones it's not too bad because the battery's only like you know like 4,000 like milliamp hours versus uh -huh. uh, like a Tesla's got a hundred amp hour battery like the thing is fucking orders of magnitude much bigger so when that thing is going to do a, a thermal runway runaway it's going to mm -hmm. explode um, yeah. and that's what's happening like I say with these hybrids and with like, these electric they, they'll just blow up um, and it's happened like, like they've got and, and they've got huge amounts of um huge amounts of the energy that they have is built into cooling systems to keep these batteries cool to make sure that they don't blow up but clearly even that tech isn't perfect yet because you know you you, you get these uh uh articles of tesla explodes literally while parked doing nothing in a in a uh parking garage in in china or mm -hmm. you know and then tes and then tesla has to do a whole kind of marketing spin on oh yeah but the guy was probably doing weird and it's like no the guy literally parked his car walked away two hours later caught on, caught on camera the car just sets itself alight you know just, and stuff like that happens all the time and it's not just Tesla's like, I'm specifically picking on Tesla's because that's the stuff I know about because that's the stuff I re I've read about but like I, I'm all of them have done it like um, right the uh, what is it Toyota the, the Toyota hybrids just as likely to explode um Battery tech ain't perfect, and also they're very, very prone to when you have a car crash, very prone to explode compared to uh, traditional ice engines, because ice engines you can kind of there is not very much fuel in the engine at any one time, even when it's running, because it's all very efficient and the fuel kind of like runs through, gets burnt away and moves out. All the fuels right. in the fuel tank and the fuel tank is very, very well protected against damage. Therefore, cars don't generally explode. Like. Sorry to break it to any viewers, but like you know, movies lie to you. Cars don't really explode. You could probably shoot a gas. Like I think one guy proved it. You could shoot a gas tank and it still won't explode. Like it, it, in a car, like you have to go with a pretty high caliber, uh, like explosive round to actually make the thing even set alight. Um, and even then, it probably still wouldn't explode. So there's actually this one car. Um, it, it's the exception, not the rule. Uh, but they. Um Snap, I forget what car it was, uh, but they figured out that in a rear end collision, um, there would be a bolt and the bolt would get free. And basically from the, the collision, from the force of the impact, the bolt would get shoved forwards and it would collide with the gas tank and it would actually cause an explosion. Um, I, I'm assuming it would cause some kind of spark then when it like collided, right? <clears throat> Uh, I I don't remember all like the the details, but I, I'm assuming so. Yeah, and in order to fix it, it was like a they, we talked about it in statistics class. Um, in order to fix it, what they would have to do is install a metal plate in every single one of the cars, um, and the estimated cost of putting in that metal plate was like a hundred bucks, I think, um, just to like basically affix a plate in front of the the gas tank it, like just a little piece of metal basically um mm -hmm. and then they figured out that the cost of the lawsuits that would happen for people that would get injured or die would be significantly less than the cost to put in a metal yeah. plate in every single car and so they didn't do it um and so uh they ended up getting sued a bunch and i, I can't remember if it ended up being more or less than they estimated but um it was a interesting statistics problem. So there, there are ways to make cars explode, but they, it doesn't happen very often. That's like a standout yeah. case. Yeah, that, that's that's a, that's a very typical sounding uh, insurance <laughs> loss thing. Yeah. Like, well, well, like how much is the liability? What will it really cost? Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. But yeah, like cars generally don't explode. Yeah, so it, that, like, that was that was the exception. Electric, electric cars if the battery pack gets pierced or damaged that thing's blowing up there is like no there is no kind of conversation there that thing's gonna blow um so yeah it's kind of very much kind of a, a different like 
electric cars in a in a high damage collision are almost definitely gonna have have a fire the uh, or serious damage to you or the car. Yeah, not a fan. I mean and, and like Tesla would argue, yeah, but the frame of the car and the fact that it's a huge battery pack will, will provide a significant amount of protection to to the individual who's in the car. And I, I do think from one perspective, yes, the actual frame and the strength of the chassis is probably much greater. Um, so yeah, you'll probably walk away from an accident without, but the car itself will almost definitely cut stuff up and, and blow up. The, the car becomes kind of like a, a liability at that point. I'm a robot and I've lost your dream. Uh, oh, you kind of sound like a robot to me. Um, okay, maybe it's my end. My stream still looks like it's running. Okay, your, your, your stream's back and you're back to being a human being. Okay. I don't, I don't know what might have caused that. I, I reckon it was me, probably. Well, Sorry. Oh, you're kind of cutting out again. Hello? There we go. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Do I, I sound better? You sound much better. Okay. Uh, your stream is back. Yeah, when I disconnect from it, it, it disconnects from the internet for a second. Yeah, the same same as my my beat. But your stream is dead. Oh, it's dead. Your stream is now dead. Yeah, I'm hitting refresh. It's not loading. Uh oh. Oh wait, no, no, no maybe. No, actually, it says you're live. But when I actually go into it, it's like I get no picture. I get that kind of guy with his hands in his hair, stressed out. Oop, is it back? I think it's coming back. It's back. Okay. Is my, my internet twacking out? Uh, no, it's... It's taken a while to load the stream in. Seems fine. I think. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems fine. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Is it, like, pausing every couple seconds? It is pausing every every second or so, yeah. Um, no, I think it's, it's settled. Oh, no, it's not settled. It is pausing.